All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the late game. My name is Lycan. With me, I have a shit ton of guests. Uh, oh, there's the picture was missing. There we go. Uh, this, this is your royal dankness. Uh, nice username himself. Along with him, I have Nathanius, Destiny, Jack Attack, Neuro, Zombie Grub, and Gemini. And we are going to talk about all kinds of stupid, cool, awesome, dank things like StarCraft and StarCraft. And <laughs> we won't talk about anything else because then we'll get hate for it on the Reddit thread. So, uh, without further ado, let us talk about DreamHack. We just got done talking about DreamHack from the game's perspective. Let's talk about the production perspective. Nathanius, you were there. Where the fuck... Is our champagne ceremony and oh, after see. ski and funny music videos? I have absolutely no idea. So the thing was, you know, people were some people were like, uh, so we didn't have to keep to a stricter schedule. This is one of the benefits of not broadcasting everything on Swedish television. Like, um, I think I don't know if they actually did it for all the CS:GO matches that were on main stage, but normally at other GMAX when StarCraft was the premier title. Like, that was, like, one of the reasons why everyone's like, why do we have to wait 40 minutes because Yun, like, fucking killed the Terran in two games. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. also, so, but we were actually allowed to move through the schedule at a pretty nice pace, so we didn't actually have as much downtime. And when we did have downtime, we added segments in. Like, you guys, anyone that, I guess, if you watched closely, like, we had, like, a thing where we brought Stefano on, we brought Hearthstone mm -hmm. on. The only big downtime was when we were going to go on TV, so they, we had to wait, like, 40 minutes, I guess. Um, yeah, um, I, I don't know. Well, it I guess was on I TV again. I didn't know that. Yeah, the grand finals were on SVT. Uh, That's so cool, it, it wasn't it us. Every time. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like I think more of the games are on for like the uh, the main title. But basically, like the, none of the English broadcast goes out except for um, Sue on the main stage when they introduce the players and do yeah. the trophy. I guess at the end. But uh, like the Swedish the Swedish crew came over. I think Matalisk and Enders were there um, to do the finals, but. The champagne bottle, I guess it just, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it, it was. didn't fit in. They I wonder. Did get shit all over the stage or like the people that were there? It was, it was like really, really nice setup, so I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. As far as the music videos go, I wonder if they were just kind of, you know, trying to, with the new management, and this isn't shitting on new management or complaining about old management being gone, but just maybe they talked to Twitch, Twitch talked to them and said, hey, we need you to abide by the music rules you know you can't play those music videos you normal play normally play but mm. you know it's it's small it doesn't really contribute greatly to dreamhack as far as the production overall but it's something that you kind of look forward to it it makes the downtime fun and twitch chat goes nuts that's uh, champagne man the champagne that really bothered me uh i don't know if you guys know this but i can open champagne with the sword I did i did actually see that yeah that is reasonably impressive it, how many is... swords do you have uh, just one. Oh, just, the sure. one sword. just the one just sword. Just one sword. Yeah, but uh, Wait, how the fuck do you open the champagne thing with a sword? Do you like chop the fucking thing off and, Dude, or what? There's literally a video of it of me doing it. Uh, go is it gonna be like really awesome? Or is it gonna be like you just using the tip to like? Wow. <laughs> just no, no, the tip. It's cool. <laughs> you like slice it like layer after the edge, like it was in like a movie yeah. too. I've seen it done. Okay, I'm googling lichen sword champagne. What do I need to search on YouTube? I'm to find gonna this? just link it to you right now. Okay, thank yeah. you. I better not be disappointed because I'm actually getting like a little bit hyped to see uh, this. Oh right? shit! Look at this. Fucking, we got Steven, Steven hyped. <laughs> oh shit! Why do people say my mic is shit? What happened? You're talking really loud, mate. You're just loud. Am I really? Yeah. Yeah, okay. you're louder than everybody else. So. I mean, that sounds like a sh about right. <laughs> so I'm gonna link it in the chat, and I'll link it directly to our chat as well for uh, Steven to watch, and then we'll, we'll all watch it together. All right, is my microphone more balanced now? Yes, way much better. better. Way better. Beautiful. Why didn't you guys tell me this in the downtime? Were you all conspiring? It didn't happen like in the downtime. Because it didn't sound bad in the downtime. I don't even fucking believe you. Fuck off. All right, click this shit. All right, so some of the screen regions are going to be screwed. Not everyone's going to be able to be seen, so... Oh, my God. Do you really look like this in person? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! You knew that was coming. You, right? First of all, you've seen me in person. Just, I know, I know, I know. Uh, Shit, man, I've transformed. I'm penguin now. <laughs> Fuck. I just fucking no, rinsed our crap. Champagne over. Let's go prove oh, it. Oh man, I heard he was so pissed yesterday. <laughs> he was really mad, but he was actually very rustled about the whole thing. Who is Russell? Did he get mad over Starcraft Jeopardy? I thought this was like. Oh. Uh, because he serious he business, games. dude. Yeah. Wait, who got mad over it? Uh, Penguin. Penguin. Oh. Because he didn't say Blu-ray with the Ender's Game tournament MLG thing. <laughs> he just 
he, he got a point to conduct it, no matter whatever, he went all in or something. What? This wasn't even cool. Oh, fuck yourself. You do that. I thought shit. you were gonna like. I thought you were gonna like slice from like a distance or some shit. I thought we were about to see some dank ass fucking samurai sword. He's <laughs> <laughs> gonna cut the bottle. God damn. I don't know. I fuck. You said with a fucking sword. You open. <laughs> you open champagne with the fucking sword, Steven. I was pretty. It was pretty dank. Like, it's not about like. Oh, it's about like how fucking cool it's supposed to be. Like. Well, look, it was an instructional video. It wasn't here. Let's do it with flash and flare. Next time I win a DreamHack and DreamHack becomes cool again, I swear to God, I will do the most incredible champagne opening your dank eyes have ever it seen. It fucking better be, because that was just not. <laughs> it just wasn't. Man, I was all so like, should have been on fire at least. Senpai gonna be proud of me. He's gonna watch this. He's gonna be. He's gonna be like, God damn, that's dank. And let me tell you, I have my whole family hating the word dank. By the way, I don't. I just. I you can't stop using it. Everywhere. I, I am. Um, anyway. I probably think you're like a drug because I've only ever heard Dank <laughs> yeah. in reference to right? Blaze. I'm so happy that word's coming back. I used to use it so much in high school, man. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I'm dead serious. This is a lot about your high school life. What was that? <laughs> Wait, was this like, what, like a year or two ago? Oh, age. <laughs> age jokes. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm just uh, all right, so we actually didn't do any intros. Uh, we have some new people here for the show. Uh, Gemini, it's your first time. We uh, gave you an intro, but there are new people here coming for part two. So if you want to say hello again, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks. Gemini, for you're the guy that posts on the StarCraft 2 subreddit, right? Like your name is Gemini on the – or am I yeah. wrong? Yeah. yeah. Hero fan. Oh, yeah. He's the Gemini. Gotcha. The, the wow. Gemini. You play, wait, you play Poros, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, don't – yeah. Don't mention that. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Uh, we're... you on ladder every day. <laughs> I did it like once, be real. And then uh, in the uh, the voice that you can't see but you can hear, uh, that is nice username. He is also a guy from Reddit. Uh, a lot of you guys do know him. You've seen his work and all this cool stuff that he makes. Uh, He's currently number one on our StarCraft, as yep. usual. Yep, as <laughs> usual. Master himself. Hello, yep. hello. Yeah, you might have known him from the crotch rubbing incident of uh, season one, WCS. Was it season yeah. one this year? My proudest work. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So whenever Frodan was there. Okay. Yeah, I think that was season one of this year. So uh, congratulations for that little moment of fame. A lot of people know you by oh, that more God. than your work. But. Oh my God. <laughs> and then we have uh, Zombie Grub back. How you doing? Hello, I'm good. Good. Neuro, how you doing? Stupid frat, Herbert. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and then we have Jack Attack. How you doing? Dude, fucking awesome. Just got off a plane. Feeling good. Where'd you come from? Nice. I was visiting family. Dang. Where? In what city? Uh, Rhode Island. Uh, which city in Rhode Island? Winsocket, sometimes. And then I went to Connecticut for a little bit for a wedding. And it was good. Just hanging out with all my family. Wow. Nice. A lot of traveling, man. So well, the first thing we're going to talk about uh, is the Archon mode. Well, we've already talked about the uh, the DreamHack. There's really nothing more to talk. Okay, actually, uh, let's go back to DreamHack. Um, what was it like working working with Wax Angel, uh, Nathanius? I like Wax. Excellent question. And I was very happy. Oh God, I fucking Wax. hate that guy. He no. still like does shit for StarCraft. <laughs> Oh. Nobody, am I the only one? I'm sorry. I, I, the only no. thing I remember was Wax like tweets like the dumbest fucking shit on Twitter, like the most insightful <laughs> shit, but he's like oh, retarded, so he can never back any of it up. He... I have a big love hate relationship with Wax Angel. Mostly okay. I love him, though. All right. So, all what right. Else? From from the perspective of Nathaniel, just working with him, so let's not talk about his actual camera appearance, but what's it like to work with him? I know he's a very smart guy. He's very, uh, you know, he's very snarky. So, what was it like? It was it was all right. It was cool. I mean, he uh, I I got roomed with him, and then we showed up to our room. And we only had one key for it. It was really fun. Uh, you know, there was a really big bed. There was a really small bed. I told him I was like I was like, well, this is your first rodeo, so he got the small bed, and he was totally okay with it. <laughs> um, I was expecting some kindness there. Like, hey. I mean, he he seemed a little nervous. Honestly, he seemed like uh, it's like for your first event, you're always gonna be a little nervous, right? He mm -hmm. did not bring the Twitter. He did not bring the Twitter snark. He brought some snark, which was acceptable, but for the most part, he was like pretty lax. Like people don't realize, like behind the scenes, like sometimes some like really weird or silly shit happens. That's like could be occasionally considered like unprofessional or whatever, but it's not like a huge deal. But he kind of just gelled. Like it was, he didn't cause any problems at all. He didn't, he didn't like freak out or anything. Like you know, he like passed the test in general. I'd say. 
And what, so, what, this sounds like an autism test. Like, what, like <laughs> are you like a functional hey, human being? Like, People. well, he didn't freak out. He didn't attack anybody. He didn't shit in the pool. <laughs> we were casting. So he seems like an okay kind of person. You know, he didn't like freeze up on camera and just like not be able to speak, right? Which, gotcha. you know, you. You know, some you know sometimes when you know the person fucking realizes they got tens of thousand people looking at them, or you know maybe Starcraft they got like ten thousand people watching them. You know, like he's still making nervous. So wow. there yeah, are a lot so of people. How about that one joke that we made with the code S Koreans finally appearing or something, and everyone just like stared at him, didn't know what to do. I think you were there when he did that. I don't remember that. Well, that was like his, he was he was he was basically that was like the reason why we brought him in though. <laughs> like him hey, to come in and, and just just say just say the things that it's like that people aren't gonna say. Like, that's cool. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, so to, to, because let's be fair. Let's be fair. You have me and Apollo, right? We're WCS casters. It's it's, been, it's even if it's at a dream hack, it's unprofessional for us to go up and say, oh, yeah, like all these guys are totally fucked. Like these guys are actually all garbage players. You know, like there's yeah. absolutely no, you know, like we can't go into the pre-match and say, oh, Hyun's totally fucked because, you know, he's not even remotely close to the level of parting. We can't say that. But Wax Angel can be like, yeah, yeah, yeah Hyun is shit compared to parting. There's really no way at all Hyun should take more than one game. Even that game would be cheese, probably. Like that's that's why Wax Angel was there, and he did a reasonable job of that. And it caught him a lot of hell. Uh, so there are a couple different yeah. people judging Hyun. First, were, or not Hyun, uh, Wax. First were those who don't know him, th those who haven't seen him, because he kind of keeps behind the scenes aside from his his Twitter stuff. And so this is his first time in camera. I think anyone that does know him shouldn't have expected, you know, he a direct translation. Some interviews. Yeah. Yeah. But besides that, I think that's all he really was on the camera. Yeah, so this is his first time really on the camera. He's got to yeah, like, give him time to, you know, blossom, come out, and, uh, you know, be able to translate that Twitter snark to yeah, actual exciting personality. I agree. All right. <laughs> well, no, I uh, really, that was my only other thing I wanted to talk about from DreamHack. Any of you guys have something in particular you wanted to talk about? We talked about the lack of uh, awesome music and champagne. And we talked about Wax Angel. Anything else? Mm. Going I once. just regret. I didn't get to watch a lot of it personally. Mm -hmm. But I heard people were complaining about uh, like all the community streams were just showing the same game. Yeah, so I did one of the community streams. And it was there was no coordination. And there were people that I didn't know. So you yeah. couldn't tell that it was, oh, there's another English caster in the stream with you. Like there were... Some people don't even use their real names when they go into the games. What did those lobbies look like? Would you have, like, ten people in a lobby or something? Um, as the game started to dwindle down, I mean, you just saw people disappearing, you know, because they get off their computer yeah. and all that. But it really wasn't too crowded. It was just, uh, you know, someone would say, hey, I'm ready for a game. You'd hop in it. But when you get in the lobby for the actual game, you wouldn't see people using their real names. So you couldn't tell, oh, okay, this is super well-known. Yeah. Well, not barcodes, but just, you know, not their normal names. And some sure. of that's because, you know, some of them are North American casters and we're on EU, that kind of stuff. And they right. use a different name. So, but uh, that, that was just where that issue came in. People didn't know who everyone else was. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like I saw like a lot of complaining more than usual, I guess, but I don't know. It could be. <clears throat> they, um, they usually have to do that, uh, you know, after a while. So like complaining's always, you know, always happens. But True. it was more than usual, and I, I don't know what happened because Rifkin was sick, and we couldn't find mm. anyone to like take on a, like a day like that. And Rifkin like really didn't want to, even though like an offered, he uh, just wanted to go to sleep because he was really sick. But like usually, what happens is that there's like a hierarchy and like a list that they give you. I don't think I'm like breaking any rules by saying this. Uh, <laughs> but they'll be like, you know, like Basie TV, you got like first priority. So like choose your choose yeah. your thing. Sure. And then everyone else like gets that's down below. And usually that that uh, it's pretty well updated. Like by the third round, things have already gotten screwy. But usually it's still like, OK, I'll take the other one. But it's definitely like set one and two, at least for the groups. <clears throat> so I don't I don't know if people were just like not following that or like, honestly, if Basie TV not being there, being like, no, this is ours was like screwing people up and being like, well, who's the second official? person i guess no one so let's all just join in on this and instead of being forced to wait because one of the worst things about being community cast is that there's tons of downtime yeah. and if you have the opportunity to get a game in you know like four minutes as opposed to 15 then you're going to get that even though you're the fourth english stream to cast it because it's mm -hmm. better than being just like waiting around to waking up at 4 30 in the morning yeah that's fair all right so uh let's talk about Red Bull Battlegrounds announcing their Archon Mode tournament during the Dota 2 event, right? That's so, trailer I haven't seen in my life. So we're going to watch this trailer real quick. Uh, so let's strap in. 
check this bad boy out. Because this is some high quality uh, production value. Or full screen that shit. There we go. This is Rotterdam. Thanks for watching Battlegrounds Dota 2. <laughs> now it's time for StarCraft. Ready, Nate? As a son of the police. I don't know, Kev. Oh. <laughs> we are Rotterdam. What? Huh? Either, Either way, way, we'll, we'll see, see you soon. soon. Beautiful. All right, so Nate, tell us the story behind that sweet ass video. I mean, I think they wanted us to do. I think they wanted us to like actually do something for it. But a Kevin's been in Europe for a while, like, so he hasn't been able to come in. And then it's like, hey, it, it was kind of like weird if they just brought me in to do it, and they had like me talk and one fake voice. Yep. So basically, Red Bull guys, <laughs> Red Bull guys did it all. Uh, the uh, one spoiler you know, I'll throw in there is the, the the reversal has finally come into play. The guy doing the Nathanius voice was actually Mr. Bitter. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. That's amazing, actually. It was pretty funny. Uh, it was like, I don't know. There was this certain balance between cringe and hilarious. I like, I like that Red Bull always uses those 8-bit drawings. And... Uh, yeah. They, they caught some part of your voice like really well like certain characteristics of it i i, I got it I, I dug it it was kind of cool i don't know Kim. so what's see look at that so what is going on with the red bull uh Arcamo tournament can you spill any beans i mean they haven't put any details out i can't say anything no okay so steven Archon it's going to be awesome, though. There's going to be a lot. That's all. Awesome. Archon mode, it's honestly, that Star tournament, that's going to save StarCraft 2, just like uh, Starbo. <laughs> <I think. laughs> yes. Have you played Archon mode, Steven? Yeah. What do you think? Um, it, it, In order to do Archon mode effectively, I think it's something that you, you honestly, you have to specially prepare for it. That's not something like two good players can't just jump into Archon mode and be like twice as good. Like it requires like a, an extreme amount of coordination. Like it's very difficult yeah. to play. Like yeah. honestly, um, I think it's more difficult to play Archon mode than it is to play like normally. Like I yeah, would almost no, rather totally. like two v one some better players than me in Archon mode. I think I would have a better chance of winning. <laughs> Just That's understandable. It, yeah, I think the way to do it is you have one person who mainly plays, and then you have another person doing extra shit on top of it. So like I would mm -hmm. just be like playing a game, or you'd play your game and be like. Fucking like defend defend my expo while you're doing something like if some crazy shit is going on that requires like too much APM for you to deal with like you know if you're playing a game and an opponent is attacking you at the same time while you're attacking that would be like yeah. I need you to step in and like defend that base while you're doing something else like it would just be something like, like they would step in and be like an extra set of hands when you needed it you know that's cool. smart man I like that idea I'm really excited for the use of Archon mode as a coaching aid so say the coach and the student are both playing an Archon mode game the coach sets back from the keyboard and maybe moves in a key scouting piece and kind of articulates what they should be looking for in the scouting meet, but they let the student do the majority of the actions in the game. Yeah, for um, for uh, coaching, Archon mode is definitely nice. It reminds me of the uh, Dota 2 coaching mode, kind of. When I when in Blizzard uh, first talked about it, that was one of the things that the dev team thought was like a potential future use. Could even end up being like specialized and setting somewhere. The one thing I think that, you know, is, is the, the Archon mode gets a bit tricky. The nice thing about it is that uh, it seems like there's I mean, it's it was almost like set in stone now, just from the way that the void is legacy. The void is set up right now that there's going to be some sort of um, ladder for Archon mode. It's right up in there with all the other settings, or right? yeah. at least modes that you can play. So unlike you know something like Starbo, which is cool as it was, and I think a lot you know like a lot of people you know thought it was interesting. Like obviously it was never going to take off because it didn't have like the big big mainstream support. Um, Archon mode could, and. It could be a really big boost to the casual scene. Doesn't matter if yeah. two bad players going in there doesn't make them any better. At least they can blame each other or like do the experience together. You know, it's not that same vibe where you're like, okay, time to enter the arena by myself for between you know, I guess five to thirty minutes where you don't really know what's gonna happen. Yeah, it's frustrating, man. Like, ladder anxiety is a big fucking deal. Yeah, it is. No, but when you're trying to grab the same units and you're both like clicking really hard and they're going the opposite direction, you know what I mean? 
Yeah. You just need a clear division of responsibilities. Yeah, but holy shit, I get so mad, and my teammate gets so mad at me. It's rough. Yeah. Them and I won't play with me anymore. <laughs> or when you're both trying to control the same things. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm saying it has to be like, I think that you have to just play your game to to the full extent you can, and the other person only steps in for specific tasks yeah. when you ask them to. That's it. Like I don't even think you can do like for Zerg, like you can't really have like some people try to treat it as like micro macro, but for Zerg, like hotkeying your army out of the eggs is, is yeah. pretty much essential. Like I don't think you can yeah. play ZB anything without doing that. So like how does one person build units and then the other person hotkey them? Like you can try to rally them to a specific spot and have your ally pick them up there, but that's gonna be inherently less efficient than just doing it right from the eggs. So I think that no. like the way that you you make use of archon mode as far as far as like a competition goes is that you just go into it like you have a friend that you play archon mode with like all the time and you just get really good and you get mm -hmm. that chemistry going and you know like oh yeah yeah at the start in, in our strategy we always do the same thing you take care of like the hellion harass while attack in the front or whatever it is you know? sure another thing too is i wonder i wonder what the chances are i always thought this is interesting you could probably design builds that would only work in archon mode mm, um, absolutely like i noticed like in playing zvz you could do like certain kinds of like 10 pull openers like you can be really particular with ling harass even if you've only got like 12 to 16 speed links you can be very 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 fine with them in such a way that like even though you would like harass them like it's impossible to keep up with your economy perfectly while harassing with them that's something that like an archon mode build would work better than like in a normal game because you could have a person yeah. dedicated to just manage you know shit like that mm -hmm. you can also break it down as carry and support so like you were saying with the difficulty binding larva to army you have one person who does droning larva army and then another person who does vision so they do creep spread with their queens they do overlord spread overseer activity which gives mm -hmm. you more time to do things like contaminate timings I have like five overseers someone is doing crazy contaminating crazy creep spread crazy overlord spread other person is straight up especially in one of the games i played with caitlin i think i was doing that i had like 15 overseers <laughs> and i was like spreading, <laughs> and i was just running into the enemy base and contaminating but like i could focus on doing it because it's not like i was i was only focusing on like spreading creep and like running around with overseers contaminating shit. yeah uh, that's it. The players that I've talked to that have played in some of the early, like the first week stuff, mm -hmm. like the Muslim, uh, especially, like he played a couple show matches where he played with Bunny in Archon. Mm -hmm. and they told me that they thought it was really cool because, like, there's some things that in 1v1 are going to be incredibly difficult, like Siege Tank drop play against, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, against Zerg or Terran. Like, anybody that's actually tried to play, like TVZ, Tank Drop, like, Tank Drops are really cool. They can be super effective if you put a lot of micro behind them and you really focus on it. But if you do that, it's borderline impossible to like effectively siege tank drop micro while macroing back home. Yeah, it's like, a huge in, APM it's, thing. It's it's the reason why like when I play beta, like I don't go tank drop because you just you fuck everything back home. But in Archon mode, it's a kind of strategy that can really blow up because instead of instead of like struggling to drop a tank while you're trying to macro and expand and get upgrades and production and blah 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 blah, you can just give one guy like three medevacs with tanks in them or some shit and go absolutely ham while the other dude macros and has your follow-up prepared so like i think that's one of the like areas like that are going to be where we see the coolest stuff the stuff that's really really difficult to pull off uh, with only you know only 200 actions a minute <clears throat> oh i think what uh is more specifically talk about with archon mode is just that like what does that mean for tournaments you know like, people are gonna be like oh i'm gonna be so excited for an archon mode tournament to watch not so, not so much to play. But is it going to be really that different? Are people actually going to watch the Red Bull Archon mode? Are people even going to like practice the Archon mode? Yeah, I, it's, it's going to come down. Mode. Pros are going to have to practice it to make it look impressive. Because if yeah. two people just jump into the game, it's just going to look, it's either going to look more sloppy than usual, um, or it's just going to look like any other game. You're going to yeah. have people, you're going to have people do weird shit, like, like the two guys that wrecked the, um, the 2v2 cup. Yeah. I ran. They just had, that was fucking they, cool. just, they had just such, particular like things that you could only do in 2v2 and they just thought it out so well they shit on like everybody that they played up until the up until the grand finals and that was only because they actually like there were so few people that were actually playing 2v2 ladder but i found out that like the the two teams that played in the finals actually played each other on ladder all week because none of the other teams were even practicing 2v2 so like they'd already played like a dozen they'd already played a dozen games so they kind of like knew how they would play but i were if the archon mode tournament you know, now that it's been announced that there's going to be one, it's possible that anybody who, like, especially people that aren't competitive and things like WCS, 
if they really focus on it and they can put together some shit that's really difficult or tricky to, to play versus, like I think it could be really cool. It's gonna mm -hmm. it's gonna offer a big opportunity for people to capitalize and having it run by a like a tournament series like Red Bull, you know, not to totally be biased or anything, but they had they've they've put that behind like the resources like last year to make even like their weird lives format for their offline tournaments really cool um you know as far as you know getting a good a good production going to keep people interested i think that there's a there's a lot of potential for it yeah but it's just like it's like you're watching the exact same thing as one v one just a lot better so like are we gonna have people say like oh i watch archon mode because you get the best but you know because of that i don't watch one v one like, yeah, but maybe you could. I think maybe it's like someone can look at it and be like, "Oh, they did this. Like, oh, I can't do this in my games, but like, oh, I'll tell my friend, like, yo, let's try this, or I do this thing." And you I mean, that's what you do thing. for one v ones, though. Anyway, like, it's the exact same thing. Like, you look at a pro gamer, he's like, "Oh, I couldn't micro like that, but maybe if I try in this next game, I'm gonna do it." Like, you're gonna do the same thing with your your Archon partner. It's just like it's gonna be the exact same thing, but just like a lot better. Like the specific things you can do in two v two are way different than the specific things you can do in one v one, but the specific things you do in Archon mode are gonna be the exact same thing, just better. Just like tank abstraction and do damage. Are people gonna be like yeah. more impressed with that? Are they gonna get bored easily and just be like, well, one v one's really good to go because how many people are gonna actually support Archon tournaments when you have to pay two people instead of just one? I mean, two v two had like its moments and uh, even that died off pretty quickly. So I'm not really sure if like Archon mode is gonna make everything. I, I do think or not. one one point that was brought up to me that I thought was actually pretty good for like the casual side of things is that Archon mode will actually like really help with uh, people that have shitty PCs because uh, you know like people joke people are like why don't we have more than two hundred supply it's like because most people's computers actually die like when they're playing like two v twos and like yeah. all, all four players are maxed out like you fucking lose you go down like twenty FPS unless you have a monster computer and even then like. When there's 600 Zerglings on the map, like no one's PC is hitting 60 FPS. No, on my i7 overclocked to 4.9 gigahertz with SLI 980s, I still did below 60 FPS when playing StarCraft 2 and 1v1. <laughs> so, I yeah, mean, right. even on like my dedicated gaming rig, I see people on the StarCraft subreddit like every now and then some fucking retard runs in and posts like, Well, I'm on an old AMD 8350, and I always am over 100 FPS in all of my StarCraft 2 games. Even if, I don't know where people get that from, but. Yeah, but I think we've it. established that, like, for casuals and for playing, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. But just, like, in terms of a tournament, because we're on a, the Red Bull watching, viewing the tournament, I don't know, like, if that's, uh, it's always going to be, like, one thing, and people are going to be excited because it's it's so far away, it's new. Yeah. But you're going to have, like, the same effect with 2v2, where, like, people are going to be, like, jump on that train, and then it's going to have to die, like, the hype's going to go down, like, dramatically. And I think, like, yeah. even more so than 2v2 did. I don't know, yeah, I think yeah. this isn't this is nothing like this is nothing like hugely revolutionary or anything like this isn't yeah, gonna... yeah it was in brood war oh. yeah this was in brood war like nobody played team melee in brood war no one fucking played that. and it, and, it, and in brood war you actually had different races you could choose like in the in the queue up you could be like i want to be protoss i want to be zerg yeah. and in the first race you'd start with the nexus and then two probes and like two drones for the other race so, yeah. yeah you could build, oh yeah like, i forgot two about different that. races worth of units it was even crazier dude that's awesome should put that in there Okay, wait. I think Jack Attack's been trying to talk for a long time, and everybody keeps cutting him off. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, I think that if like minimum case scenario, it's a really good advertisement for the mode and the idea, and people get to talk about it. Cast, oh, hey, you get to play at the same time, and it's cool, and it's good for casuals. But I don't think that it's going to be this like exciting thing of like people playing better unless people decide they're going to practice for it. And I think that to have enough incentive for people to practice for it and not practice one v one, it's just. It's a really difficult hurdle to get over. Yeah. Uh, well, I think like, do you, do you think there's anyone out there who's really gonna be like looking at Archon and then look at one v one and prefer Archon so much more and actually start blasting one v ones? No, me. No well, one think... good. No one really good. There's not gonna be any like Korean pros that are gonna start doing Archon mode. Right. So my the last I mean, the last thing I'll say the last thing I'll say in defense of the Archon mode thing is that from a tournament production perspective, you have a chance to make more interesting tournaments. Like if you have if like for for example. If Red Bull does like something similar to last year, if they like bring in like the teams instead of just like the players and have like maybe say like four teams competing against each other, like at least the video pieces and when people are like looking at how the players interact with each other, like for a tournament watching experience, you could get better banter, you know, like you, you'll have to like hear what the teams like think of each oh, other. Oh, that's um, another thing too that like I figured out. reality I'm show or whatever. If you do the Archon mode, there's a lot more um, opportunity for like some intense shit talk in the beginning of the game because one person's doing a macro, one person literally has nothing oh. in three minutes. Yeah. I thought you guys you like lay I, into people. An Archon mode thing that I would like we're we're looking into and everyone's looking into is actually being able to jump in the calls of the people that are playing. 
like if Red Bull could hook that up so that like every once in a while they're like, let's see what everyone's talking about, and you we watch one good suggestion. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, and so that's like, you know, like fuck you, man. Why are you micring? You're supposed to be macering, and that's hilarious. <laughs> that's actually what we're doing for next week's uh, Lycan League. Yeah. Next week's Lycan League is uh is Archon mode, and I'm setting up a Ventrilo server for Zombie Grub and Rifkin to jump in and out of. Like you know, each team will be on you know in their own channel on the server. And they'll be able to, you know, jump in their own private channel when they want to just cast and not, you know, whatever. And Ventrilo then... is like Skype, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Ventrilo or Mumble would be way better for this. Than Skype. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant TeamSpeak. <laughs> TeamSpeak is what I was going to use. Yeah. Oh. Ventrilo or Mumble. Oh, TeamSpeak. Yeah, TeamSpeak. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I said Ventrilo. Yeah, TeamSpeak or Mumble would be good. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> TeamSpeak and, and and then you know they can they can mute their mic, um, so that they can jump in there and they're not going to be able to hear them talk. So yeah, it'll be a. I think it's going to be exciting. I'm hoping to hear some fun stuff. We had one game stop uh, the last Arkham Mode tournament we did where they were saying, hold on, pause, please. Uh, he's sucking, or I can't remember what he said, but they were bitching about <laughs> each tank other. Tank drops suck. <laughs> yep. Deciding who's your tank drop. This guy can't micro. Fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I think that's pretty awesome. But, um, Arkham Mode is definitely, at the very least, might not be the savior of esports, but it's fun. It's going to be exciting. It's, some, it's something, right? Yep. It's something. I don't exactly. think it's gonna last like an extremely long time though, unless you get something really interesting with it. Like like what Zombie Grub was saying, like if you don't come up with something that's really interesting, different uh, each different time, I think it's just gonna be like one of those like one hit pony kind of things, like with the two v two tournaments that like worked really cool, but then kind of blew out a little bit. The Starbo thing was the same way. Like if you can find cool things with it to, since it's so versatile, you can do a lot of different things with it. I feel like that would be good. Like with the thing where you can listen in or whatever. Um, maybe you can do something where like a pro and a, and a complete like bronze league play together or something. You get a whole tournament off of that or whatever. I feel like you can have a lot of room for different things like that to make it a longevity, like give it some longevity so that you can make something more out of it instead of just kind of like, oh, hey, it's Archon mode. It's new. It, we haven't seen it before. So give me a lot of money kind of thing. I think this is all going to be like what they said, like just uh, like whoever jumps on it first gets big numbers and it, it'll die off. But at least it's like advertisement for the mode, because what they should do is like we're talking about all the casual things about it. And that's that's like the point of it is supposed to be like for casuals to have fun. So hopefully they'll put that in like the automated tournaments, like Archon mode tournaments. And if they if they cool. weren't thinking about doing that now, hopefully they will once the Archon mode pop our uh, tournaments are really popular. Oh, with the Bnet automatic tournaments yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're. Gonna, That's like, really they interesting. That for, they did that for team games in Warcraft Three too, so like they did it for all of them. So I would not see why. They I have no that. idea what that's going to be like. I hope it it's good because weren't that's, haven't that's people really been wanting it forever? Man. Dude, that's like one of the one things I've wanted forever yeah. since I saw well, Warcraft. Well, are we going to talk about the Legacy of the Void patch notes? That was the first thing. So I'll, I'll wait. Yeah, we're going to talk yeah, Legacy yeah. of the Void, but before we let's segue into that um what we're gonna go talk yeah. legacy of the void but with that let's talk about um legacy of the void let's talk about there was a complaint about dreamhack and the uh and the lack of replay posting right and i don't want to oh, well yeah. hold on but i don't want to i don't want to get into huge circle jerk about that what i do want to talk about though is what i do want to talk about is the uh sorry there's my roommates having a conference call and it's distracting me um is so imagine this right you have this tournament set up that you create right so as soon as someone sits down at their computer at dreamhack and logs in it immediately uh connects them with their opponent right because it's already been loaded up the brackets already been loaded up by the tournament organizer right and then they play their game and as soon as the game is done the score is reported and the replay is like distributed right so that at the end of the tournament dreamhack has this nice little package of everything it helps them organize their tournament so that admins can actually handle issues instead of you know modifying brackets and things like that and then all those replays are nicely packaged with you know who v who game what out of what on x yeah. map and then it's just i like the idea but i feel like it's almost unnecessary like you saw in the thread right someone posted this little small windows script or something to yes. gather the replays up for a pc right well for the sake of replays sure but there's more to it Oh, yeah, you're talking about, like, brackets and, and the matches and right, stuff. Right, to help the tournament organizers go along. Yeah. You mean, like, live like, updated replays, yeah, like, as the yeah, tournament's going? Like, like you look at a bracket and then you can, like, download the replay, like, the second... The well, game yeah, game. so there's that that for the sake of us who would benefit from getting the replays. And then there's the, the management of the bracket automatic automated through the blizzard client for the battle.net client having to like go to the site oh like so like how csgo does that. it or whatever mm. i've actually not uh experienced that so i'm not you can like, you can download the demos through the clients yeah. okay. what the fuck so, are we what are we talking yeah, about yeah why did you bring, you're saying, like, they should no do replays. that 
or yeah, no. So what I'm saying is that that Blizzard should consider as far it's, along with the interesting possibility along yeah. with these automated tournaments is making uh, it so that it's not just like you know automated tournaments online, but like it yeah. can actually. I have to used. imagine though that like no matter what they they'd have to basically like, I, don't, I don't say what, no matter what they did they have to be very careful about how strict they are on their side and how like how loose they are on their side too right because DreamHack will want to control their own tournament and if the automated tournament for StarCraft 2 has for instance the time limit as we're going to talk about the patch time limit, limit, that's gonna be... then does DreamHack want to like you know do that well, or they're going to be like hey can you make this you one know, tournament inside these, StarCraft just for us all of these things <laughs> just be toggleable options easy fixed yes Booyakasha. there we go look at me just, press the button to create oh, man it'll press come. the button you would think that tournament. a lot of things okay I, I, I click a button i press create tournament Oh, you know, you're right. You're right. There's the but there's the possibility that Blizzard's like, well, people are gonna tune into multiple tournaments, and one tournament's gonna have no games over 30 minutes, and the other one's gonna have like a 45 minute Blizzard. game, and everyone's gonna freak the fuck out. Blizzard has <laughs> a poor history of making things not toggleable that should be, and also things that are toggleable, putting them as default. For instance, not being able to click yeah. on enemy. Yeah. So oh, being able to click on enemy units as default is <laughs> like. <laughs> I'd really like to. I'd like We're to, worried I'd that like casuals won't understand why. the game, so we put this on as default. That actually <laughs> blows my mind. I can't understand it at all. Hey, what's this? What's my this opponent, unit my opponent's building something. What is that? I've never seen it before. I want to learn about it. <laughs> <laughs> the face was perfect. I almost lost like the first game I played when they put that in because I had no idea. Right? <laughs> oh, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm like furiously trying to spam. Look like, like, see what upgrade this Hydra has. I'm like, is my game broken? Like, what the fuck does that? Like, what? So, I wouldn't bank on it. <laughs> All right, so let's let's yeah, talk no, about please. these let's talk about these patch notes, right? So first, the in-game clock. Does anyone? And first of all, to the viewers, sorry, uh, you know uh, we have eight people on the show. Insane. Uh, I'm not adjusting this screen for for that. <laughs> so you only get to see Nathaniel's Gemini and Penguin, aka Jack Dak, but he's mislabeled. <laughs> anyway, so uh, in-game clock. Can't label me. Right. In-game clock. Mm -hmm. Anyone uh, have any negative thought on keeping the in-game clock the way that they've Fuck put it? Fuck that shit, man. I want weird-ass hard to swarm time. I give, like, history lessons whenever someone asks about it, so I'll miss that part, but... <laughs> uh, the one thing, the one thing that I want to mention, though, uh, I really don't like the way the replays are set up right now. The... When you oh, my God, yes. Replays, it scales all the tooltips and the clock and the in-game clock to whatever speed you're doing it in. But for some reason, to get real time, you have to set it to times eight speed. So I'm trying to figure out like gas timings and shit. I'm just like, all right, go to times eight, write down the number, like play it out and then go back, go back to times eight so I can write down another number and all that shit. I think it should just be straight up in real time. I almost want to say it's a bug. It makes no sense. And they haven't, they never said anything about no. it. Is it a bug or is it a feature? Okay. Yeah. But here's you know, the, the mini map bug. Know. Yeah. This is like, <laughs> all right. Blizzard, Nathaniel. Blizzard, Blizzard talked about why this was a problem like a long time ago. You know, like I don't, I don't think that Dustin Browder was talking out of it, like blowing smoke out of his ass or some shit when he said that there were engine reasons why it's like, yeah. that. like what I, the way I see it is that Blizzard basically took like some sort of like, you know, I, I don't code, so it's like whatever the term is, like some hack job, like slapped it together so that when you're playing a ladder game on faster speed, the in-game clock moves at a certain pace. And that's it. Like everything else is still tied to the old system. But because it's like like the, the side effect of like slapping something together like that without really polishing it is that it fucks everything else up when it's not in the one usage scenario that you originally wanted it for. So basically, Blizzard has to yeah. probably just well, go in and like put another like hack yeah. job for every single other thing out there, or they send it back to old replay. If time. they don't entirely redo the like, what do you call it? I don't know programming stuff either. But like the entire like system of StarCraft Two, right? Like they had problems putting in a marketplace for it, and they're gonna have problems putting in skins. Like if they ever do anything like that, having a having a transaction, what? they're gonna oh have to God. completely yeah. redo the uh, like the programming for it, right? The map marketplace when yes. that was announced. Oh, I wasn't sure. What Sorry, you were I'm lagging. <laughs> Sorry, can you can you hear me? Because my you got it, man. Go. Yeah. Okay, so that holy words. shit, dude, that was a huge deal. Cause, okay, in Brood War, I was obsessed with map making. Only thing, okay, bro, was UMS games map making. And so when they announced, like, yo, we'll pay you to make maps and you can sell it. Like, holy shit. Yeah. I mean, that, that was, was a big huge. deal. And then, then just, like, just, that never happened. Just that wasn't like just programming issues, though. I'm sure there was, like, the legal issues, too. You know, especially since sure. at the, uh, in the beginning, they were having, like, 
they're fighting with like Dota, right? So yeah, they're not really like protective over their uh, their licenses. But it's still like the same thing for the programming side, though, is that they they built this thing in 2010 that even have like fucking chat channels, and they've been like band-aiding on it. Yeah. As far as we know, it's been like the mm, exact same geez. like interface and whatnot. So if they have to add all these things, then you would hope that what we see now for like is the void is just like because it's the beta and that yeah. by the time it's announced it could actually be completely redesigned yeah. and that they'll have to they'll just start from the ground up because they are kind of going back yeah what remember we were talking about how 2v2 or 3v3 and how team game performance just sucks like really bad when there's a bunch of units yeah um i was just thinking like when do you think the engine was actually developed like how old is this engine for 2007 yeah like, like yeah they came out this with the first game is approaching like... brood war age and it's it feels like it's not that new or not that old you know i feel like this so uh we're, we're all kind of out of our zone here right because i don't think there are any actual software does here yeah. I, f I feel like um i feel like when you talk about games like rts i feel like those games are always going to be cpu bound because of the type of stuff that's going on on the screen like yeah. when you look at a game like starcraft so you look at a game like starcraft and you compare it to something like crisis or killing floor or some other game like that you're like these games look 50 million times more graphically impressive why does mm. something like StarCraft II get bogged down so hard just because of CPU related shit? Well, in, in, yeah. in, in those other big like FPSs and shit that you play, all of that stuff is done on the GPU, right? It's just a bunch of textures that are being rendered on the GPU. That kind of yeah. stuff is a lot different than having like a hundred different individual units on the screen. Yeah. They're all being controlled. Like I, I feel like RTSs are always going to be like CPU bound to some extent, just yeah. because of the nature of having a ton of different units on the screen all doing their own thing. Like yeah. a lot of people rag on StarCraft 2 for engine issues. And I mean, like, I mean, I'll do it too, just because it's obviously shit that the FPS gets so capped. But honestly, I've never seen another R uh, RTS that like can actually display a ton of individual units on the screen and not fuck up. Like I played a lot of that Grey Goo game and yeah, the, uh, yeah with, with Huck and the uh, Grey Goo game suffered the same problems. When you started to get a lot of individual units on the screen, the, you were always CPU bound in those games hardcore as well and your FPS would it's, also um, It's because of the pathfinding. Cause so like when you have a bunch of units selected and you right click, it has to do like 600 units. Tons of calculations. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, that makes I don't sense. Know. It's interesting to think about though. It's like, interesting it's, to me too. Actually, some people bring up in the in the chat though. Day nine, day nine's uh, RTS is playable on like it's just a fucking browser game. And have we seen any like previews? We don't, yeah, we don't even know how that looks. It looks fucking awesome. JavaScript has come and it's so far though. Fucking nuts. And there's right now, I think it's like four on four, and <laughs> maybe you get like as the game goes on, you get more and more units. So you're, we're probably approaching very close to the amount of units. That oh. you get in a StarCraft game, and it's in a fucking browser. Um, I mean, has, is it like playable at all yet? Do we actually? Yeah, uh, well, there's a demo, but you have to be yeah. invited. I'm pretty sure. It's yeah. still. It's it's I'm closed. Saying, it's like, closed, comparing, it's closed it's, beta right now, or closed yeah, alpha, or whatever. Right. To assume like, that Blizzard isn't capable of harnessing the latest and greatest technology to I, make the RTS. I doubt it's. I I doubt it's as simple as it looks. To be perfectly honest. I agree. The fact, oh. that, it's in a the fact that this. Like the thing that people never give the people that think that like people never take into consideration is that unlike um, StarCraft, every other like major big game out there suffers from the same issues that playing games over the internet like pretty much always gets. The exception, of course, is that you know for all the all the bullshit political reasons, StarCraft Two never had land put into it. But like when you're playing like games like League of Legends or Counter Strike or I don't I think Dota Two might actually have a similar deterministic engine. I'm not 100 percent sure, but like you can get like rubber banding or stuttering, or whatever. Like where shit like moves around and like kind of moves back. But you're not. It's not always. You can't be 100 percent confident that what you're seeing is actually what is happening. Yeah. And like, Starcraft is exceptionally good at that because I there's like no rubber banding because of latency. Like the way that the yeah. engine works. If that were to happen, the game just stops and it waits for all the systems to catch up in sync, or like you know your fucking game crashes or whatever. But that doesn't happen often enough, it's like an issue. So that's one of the that's one of like the nicer things about the way that the StarCraft engine works. But obviously, you know, if computers were allowed to be wrong against each other, you'd probably have like a smoother overall experience. I mean, was there? Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. It's where like we we need like a like a person who actually does this though because like what i was talking yeah, about what i think is more important shit. is not the actual interface like the engine and interface in game although people like are asking for like overlay changes and what like whatever fine but i'm talking about like when you load up battle net like it's not yeah. entirely different like that that should like, yeah. so like this is uh you know it's all great points about why 
the occasional complaints about Maxion armies is is so a problem. And I'm I'm almost sure, I'm almost positive they could streamline it better and start from the ground up. Almost, but of course I don't actually. Wait, know. what do you mean? Wait, what money. do you mean by? You're talking, you're talking about like the the out of game UI. Yeah, I'm talking about the out of game well, the UI. Out of, yeah. the out of game yeah. UI is. Just oh, wait, what does the out of game UI have to do with maxing out and? No, it doesn't. Access. That's that's what I'm talking about. Though, is that, like that's what I first brought up, and that's what they should be like entirely oh. rebounding from the ground up. Like I'm sure the in game gotcha. stuff could also be better. Like you know, like they could get rid of band aids that they had to do for the past six years or whatever. But even if they don't, and people just have to get used to StarCraft 2 always having some lag in like 4v4 max situations, the out of the out of a game interface is the one that should change. That's the one that's gonna have like the skins and then the marketplace and you know chat channels and whatever. That's a good point. Things. I haven't thought about that at all. Do we know if that's even like possible? Like can you do just the out of game without affecting the in game in game? Like Yeah, they're they entirely different yeah, things. Yeah. Like I would sure, have to imagine sure. they already are two entirely different things. Yeah, they're um, I'm almost certain they're completely separate. So what are you guys talking about changing with the out of game UI? You just mean the way it appears and functions? Like changing everything from GCP IP to UDP. I, I've been waiting for a, a UDP comment. <laughs> I'm dying, I'm dying. I'm dying. <laughs> we had to eventually get over here. I'm sorry. Uh, all right, so let's. I was just wondering if there was some way to fucking channel the spirit of winter and to ding it for the intro screen and everything. Uh, Jesus Christ! All right, so let's move on to the uh, the automated tournament game length. Um, basically saying that in the automated tournaments, you know, they can't have a bracket being held up by a swarm host hell. So they're going to limit it, and this isn't finalized, but it would be 30-minute mark or 42 minutes hot time, hot's time. It's an arbitrary number. Well, you, it's arbitrary. All numbers Well, are, so they, they said 30 minutes, like, you know, real time, you know, because we often talk in 15, 30, an hour-long increments of time. Sure. So they chose that, and I, if you look at it, 42 minutes, I'd say that most games end under 42 minutes. Oh, yeah, definitely, but... But a lot go more too, right? Well, not well it's a also lot. for Legacy of the Void. Yeah, Legacy of the Void is. Oh, definitely yeah. But the problem with that is that what we're saying right now, Legacy of the Void looks like it's it starts sooner and it, it yeah looks like it would always stop sooner just because of the increased pace of the game. That doesn't. Yeah. Like, so let's. People thought you know Wings of Liberty like the the farthest you get was like a two racks, you know, like ten minutes, <laughs> and obviously that didn't stay true. So. so let's let's take out the uh, let's take out the exact times that they said and just know uh -huh. that they're because they say the it's not finalized. But let's just look at the idea of time. I don't think that's a bad idea. That's um, the thirty minute thing that was only for automated tournaments. Right. They're, they also put on a, this time limit for actual games, games, no matter where you're playing it. And that's the thing because like the automated tournament thing, that's. Are that's you talking about the stalemate time. limits? Yeah. Okay, so I mean, it's, it, basically, it's basically the same thing, right? One's called automatic tournament game length. The other one says stalemate limits, but it's the same thing. It's like the idea of, like, let's put a hard cap on how long a game of StarCraft Yeah, but, like, in an automated Wait, tournament, why? it makes a lot more sense. But we were talking about, like, yeah. a tournament. A tournament, like DreamHack, they should, I think, they should let them go on as long as they freaking have to before adding Yeah, this sounds, on. why is this even being talked about? Like, is this really a huge problem that we're having all these games that run on all this time? Like, this seems like not really an actual And they're only like, like, so much, it never happens, though. I this feel like all of this stuff can be host. mostly like addressed in game design. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I feel like yeah. addressing it in the idea of like, okay, we don't want games to go long, so they won't. But for like the automated tournaments, you know, like the. The, the, the automated action. tournament get, one makes yeah, sense. Yeah, automated tournaments, I get that. I as get far that. as regular games go, how often does a pro game, one, the ones that matter, because let's be honest, the end, end game design, the end game goal for Blizzard is to ensure the pro scene. Is to cater to the pro scene. How often do yeah. we see these pro level games? Jack Attack. I mean, what I mean is, man. I'm talking about competitive because you know what? It's more important that if in the high level play, so GM and professional level play, if we're not having games going over, you know, an hour and a half more mm -hmm. than once in a blue moon, no one really cares. Like, but if there, I bet there's so many damn Bronze League games. I could yeah. tell you that half my Bronze League games against Terran were turtle battles to see who could master battle cruisers faster, take more bases, and then go. But that was literally not joking. Half of my my Bronze games, and yeah. I'm sure I'm not the only guy that does that. So this can't be catering to them. This has to be catering to the higher well, level not, players. I, I'm, and the thing is, I'm definitely not talking about catering. But I think that um, now I'm the, hungry. You said like. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be interesting to see. No one has to consider a time limit in StarCraft ever. No one has to look at a clock and be like, oh shit, I was here with my mothership for 50 minutes and now it's almost reaching the, the out of. Yeah. It's kind of a funny funny thought, though. Someone like, oh shit, clock's about running out in a minute. I'm going to yeah, see exactly. what I can We've suicide. Never had to that before. Like, like Jack Tack 
and you, I guess you brought up the, uh, like, bronzing point. It is, like, okay, on one hand, you're going to have people that are just thankful that an hour and a half game has ended because they didn't, you know, they didn't want to end it. You're going to have people that are, like, they're actually, like, they really wanted to win, you know? Yeah. And, you know, maybe they're being dicks about it, too. Like, they're I the feel like, yeah, I feel like it opens the door for people to be assholes, too, and be like, oh, well, if I want to win, I'm just going to sit here and turtle for an hour. And I'm going to nuke everything yeah. you have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's that, like I'm so, just gonna be super fucking defensive, never attack for an hour and a half, and do it in a way that gets me more experience than you, and win. Yeah. Like, but I kind of, I kind of jumped at you, yeah. Jack Attack. I kind of jumped at you. So go ahead yes, with, man. yeah. So, but what I wanted to to concisely clarify is that I think that the end goal when it comes to the the player versus player aspect of StarCraft is to ensure that at the pro level things are balanced and things operate in a in a way that, uh, you know, gives the pros the best environment to compete. But go ahead with yeah. your, your thought process. I don't know. I think that, like, Blizzard is a is a company that makes video games for people to play, and that's how they make their money. And, like, esports is a thing, right? Everyone knows esports is a thing. We play it. It's a high-level game. It's competitive and all that stuff. But, like, Blizzard makes the bulk of their income that they're incentivized to make StarCraft fun for the majority of players, which is not professional players. So I mm -hmm. think that, like, when they're looking at stalemate limits, automated term, turn, uh, tournament limits and stuff like that, I think that first and foremost like it's going to be about okay what effect does this have on the average starcraft viewers enjoyment like players enjoyment of the game you know but do most people want this kind of a hard cap or are the majority of people going to get frustrated That's... because they're not going to be winning games and they're like they're having this epic game it's hitting an hour and a half like oh it's this huge struggle and then like it just ends and i'm like ah zombie grab thoughts blizzard has always been has always been very like on and off about that because jack Tag brought up that that's what they're catering towards but they're actually in terms of sales no they're not yeah in terms the... of sales they're trying to buy as many campaigns as possible right that's what most people it's are going to campaign. play unless they put in a marketplace and then yeah you'll be appealing to casuals who want to buy their like gold tanks well, i think the camp i think the campaign appeals to the casuals too though like, yeah no yeah that's what i'm saying it's though a, like it's a one-off type thing he said that yeah. like he was saying that like you want to appeal to people who buy your game because they want to have a fun time when they play your game competitively like on a ladder and i'm like well that's that's not true like if they bought I the mean, game, I don't, that's what they no want. I, I don't mean competitive on a ladder i just mean just like overall like oh, that's the most i think when it comes to average user and not the they're not like oh let's make this game like the best for the professional well, if we look at this, like, so this seems to get brought up uh, in the, the lower level discussion groups. They seem to get brought up. Like, let's look back at the oracles and the blank play mm -hmm. from, from long uh, ago. And uh, there were a lot of stupid, oh, God, I look back on these discussions. They're so dumb. But they, they talk about the Im imbalance, right? And it's that kind of bronze, bronze science jag attack where you, you know, you take a look. Yo. Yeah, yo. You look at the you look at these things and you get frustrated and you don't, you know, you don't process it with, okay, well, there's a way to counter it. There's a way to play against it. The game isn't supposed to be symmetrical, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, but it's those kind of things that uh, are what I'm saying is that we don't cater to that logic. We cater to the, to the way the game is supposed to be played at a higher level. So in, when it comes to automated tournament game length, I, I don't see a problem with that at all, but I think the stalemate limit, that's at the high, that's not something I would really worry about. I just don't think it's necessary. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Not. Exactly. I want to ask a question. I think we all agree that. Um, so this limit is for every game, right? It's not just tournaments. It's not just automated tournaments. Yeah. There are two separate things, right, that they're discussing. One is a 30-minute limit on automated tournaments, and the yeah. other is an hour and a half limit on all-star. On everything. Right. Yeah. Okay. I feel like... They're considering like both earlier, in, like, in different ways, like not just one. Actually, never mind. I'm not going to finish that. But yeah, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, man. I got to agree. I agree Couldn't agree more. Mm. All right, guys, let's talk about some balance changes. Let's keep this rolling. So, Bam. Mothership Core, right? Where, where are my Gemini at? Uh, uh, mass Germany. Recall reduced Germany. to 100 energy. Or, I'm sorry, 50 energy from 100. Um, it sounds interesting, but I'm not sure how much it's going to fix what needs to be fixed like i feel like the problem mostly with protoss right now is that it's hard to take bases in the first place than it necessarily is to defend multi like more of them okay like, it's like to secure bases yeah like early on like if you like you'll take like a you have to take like a faster third like it's very difficult to stay on two bases now like that's the that's the goal from blizzard they want you they want to make it so you can't just stay on two bases for a really fucking long time and just keep rolling in over and over again right but um like <laughs> it's it's once you take that third base 
it's not like you're going to be like all over the map everywhere. All of a sudden, you need to like recall to a bunch of bases to like be able to defend them. It's just getting it up at the first point. Yeah. You're going to be there already. Like being able to recall less uh, or more often doesn't feel like that's going to make me feel safer to take more bases because I still have to wait for the base to get up to be able to recall to it. And like, I, I don't know. I feel like it, I feel like it's addressing the 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 wrong problem in a mm. in a wrong way. Like I don't feel like it. I don't think it yeah. solves anything, to be honest. It'd only help if you took like a like a hidden expansion. <laughs> yeah, but like even then, like Protoss aren't very weird. good at that either. You know, because like you know, the, mm -hmm. I mean, I know someone brought up on Twitter. I think it was Hero Dragon that like maybe it'll be like it'll be like Zerg Brood War, where like in you take like the farther space to the left of you as opposed to expanding in like the triangle like we do in StarCraft Two. The Protoss are by nature like slow even with the recall it's like sure you recalled a wet base it actually happened in pro league right yeah you, like, you recalled that base and then you drop in the natural anyways like that doesn't fix your your problem oh, like, beautiful. Like, <laughs> <many times. laughs> like right. one game i remember specifically that i played um against a terran like i was doing well in the in the early game like it was doing well i was kind of trying to stay like to a normal like kind of hot thing but just implementing small legacy of the void things to kind of just keep myself in a like an a familiar mindset of the game or whatever and like i'm trying to pick a third and i take it and but then all of a sudden like i've noticed i'm like kind of strapped for money a little bit kind of out of nowhere i guess because like the, ma the main mine's out so much faster mm -hmm. and like they're like he's doing his normal terran pressure and i'm like defending one thing all of a sudden crap i'm caught really off guard like my third gets sniped um and all of a sudden now i don't have money to remake that third and build an army to be able to come back at the same time so I feel like that's the bigger problem than being able to like recall really quickly to save it or something. Because yeah. like that's not like that being able to recall quicker to my other third, that wouldn't have helped it like at all. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't I wouldn't have saved it. It wouldn't have like <clears throat> impacted the game. I feel like the hard thing with Protoss is if you don't get your third up, you're you're dead because you can't afford because your units are so expensive, you can't afford the base and a and an army to be able to attack at the same time. So that you're really you're really strapped if you can't get the third. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense too because they, they nerf the units you're supposed to. Because like in even in Heart of the Swarm, we have like a Iron Fortress or Catalina. You had to take a, a slow third base anyways versus Terran, right? You're gonna get dropped to death. And you could do yeah. that. You could get like decent upgrades at least, and maybe tech up, and then you would eventually expand at least like 13, 14 minutes, and you actually could make it work. But that wasn't like Colossus are good, right? Colossus aren't good anymore, and you're it's running out so of money even now. faster. So like, what? I don't like. It feels like they're doing all the wrong things for this this. They know how Protoss works. They designed it that way, you know, whether or not we agree or like that design, and that they're they're doing everything that says like that not Protoss, like forcing them to build like a lot of small units opposed to like the big units that they've always relied on. And Adepts are working in like versus Terran apparently, and that's cool and all, but I don't know, versus Zerg. It's uh, difficult. I was really fantastic nice. against Zerg right now. <laughs> two base adept transition into two base adept, transition into three base adept. Just mass adepts. <laughs> running. Had a They're not gonna let that happen, though. Like a couple void gonna... rays at the top. No matter how many, <laughs> I wonder if the depths are good or even great. They're not gonna let that happen. Yeah, I remember when I first used that unit, and the, like when they first they first came out, and I was like, this thing is garbage. It's garbage. It's like no one will ever use it. And then they buffed the shit out of it, and now it's so good. I was just really shocked. Yeah, man, it's the beefiest tier one unit in the game. Yeah, it blows my mind. I thought it was so and then it bad. And it gets an upgrade to be more. I still yeah. think it's kind of bad, but I'm wrong. Like, I know it's good. You just gotta learn, man. You gotta learn. Yeah, man, it's deceptively strong. It's like, yeah. it's this little tiny <laughs> thing, so it's like, oh, wow, I can just adapt to things for days. Uh, they're, uh, okay. they're just, like, they're not gonna let, let you only mass one unit. They're gonna realize that's, like, a problem just being boring. And if, yeah. even if they do, like, that... You have to entirely change against, again, Protoss making, like, a bunch of small units, which are now adepts, I guess. A mass void race. Ugh. All right. So, I, feel, I feel like it just it just all stemmed from the stuff we've always been talking about, which is the warp gate mechanic and the force field. And that's the yeah, problem. that's the it's such a like hit. you can't buff you can't buff gateway units because then they're too strong with the force field and warp gate mechanic. Yeah, you buffed you buffed early game for everyone else, and then Protoss is like, great early game, like non blink stalkers and non charge dot zealots. I'm totally ready to go. Oh yeah, shit, yeah. no, I'm not. <laughs> they, they buffed all the other races early game, but nerfed the Protoss early. Er or nerfed the Protoss early game and like figured it's gonna be okay like that uh, it's, it's confusing so basically recall not the problem yes i think that's how yeah. they summarize yeah them. yeah let's 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 go to the next on one. to the next change that was a very Basis. important change the mothership 
Oh, my bad. Oh, Mother yeah. Mothership. Who's, this, who's this host over You're here? Right. Mothership is. <laughs> I, I, I was actually going to skip that one and just go straight to the, uh, the Brood Lords. The host name is Lycan. Yeah. The, the Mothership's better. Okay, moving on. And the Stasis is now forced to autocast, so now I can't go that's and stop sense. everyone from expanding anymore. Yeah, <laughs> that's common sense. So the Stasis Ward, I think, was a smart choice. Honest to God, yeah, I, I had. What? Sorry. This Did is see, a uh, terrible change. Well, yeah, I, 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 I liked the skill that they had to be able to like be able to um, use it whenever you wanted. Yes. The they they uh, mentioned with that is kind of like, I, I I never saw that happen to be honest. But like I feel like it's cool to have it where you can. Okay, wait, hold on. I'm 100 percent with you, Jonah. Hold, hold on. Okay, so I misunderstood the change then. So yep. I, I misunderstood the change. So what I think they should do is um, make it so that if you plant the stasis ward in range of already stasis units, it automatically blows up. Like, you can't do that. Like, you wouldn't be able to time it right to where that stasis ward finishes, and you'll be able to get a unit out in time. You'll be able yeah. to get those units. Because I like the ability to automatically trigger it, but you don't want them to be able to... Because here's the thing. I was, I was playing a game against uh, the Carbot guy, and when he played it, play, he tried to do the chain stasis, and it exploded immediately. So I thought this was already uh, a thing. I thought they I already. Had... I feel you like there's the just a lot better way to address this a problem than taking away the ability to. Yeah. That exactly. It's a terrible. It's a, it's a terrible, oh, yeah. terrible change. I don't think. I, I really don't. I really hope that no one like serious. Did you see, this. there what are, are so the mods. Other, there are so many tiny things that you could change that would, would completely remove this. Yeah. Like, like what, what? What? How exactly does it work? Does do do you activate the other stasis before the first one ends? Can we just make it so they don't stack at all? Like well, yeah, storms? exactly. They already don't. They, they, really they, don't, they already don't stack. So you can't. You can't. You can't reset the stasis exactly. by triggering a second one. That is one. correct. So, so just make it. Just make it auto detonate if you put it no, in range yeah. of. Listen, can, you not, can you not run three more units over to like scan and kill the thing once you realize that you're being stasis fucked? Like, is it that? Yeah. Is it so impossible? That, like, some person, like, some person's like, some person's like, you know what? I actually had two hundred supply. Of all <laughs> I had two hundred supply of all ground units. First of all, I don't even know how it's possible to stack two hundred supply in the range of one stasis. If someone can figure out. How to how to stasis fuck two hundred supply of <laughs> forces of ground forces with enough stasis wards. Like you're talking like twenty stasis wards here. I don't even know, man. You need like fifty fucking stasis wards. <laughs> the stasis fuck two hundred supply only ground army because it doesn't affect air units, so that it's not right. possible for you to send anything over to scan or an overseer or a fucking observer or an oracle. There's right. no humanly possible way. For you to real, for you to kill the other stasis words before the duration on one of them ends, like, like honestly, who, I'm Personally, kind of impressed. Well, the other thing too is like, right? Bad enough at the game for that to happen to them. The problem, the problem too is like, well, it's like, okay, they're stasis, but you can't kill the units anyway. It's not like you're losing your units. Yeah. Like they can't, you know, is you're just like, oh, like I have some problem. Troll? I have to deal with it now, and I have like, it's like some seconds. troll we never. You never fucking realize, guys. There's actually a troll who just masses oracles. <laughs> he stays this folks people so long that we hit the hour time <laughs> limit every game. This this term. Not to limit games. Dude, this, term's, this term is gonna <laughs> stick. Dude, we need to keep this. You know, that's why we need to, we need to limit. That's my next smurf idea, man. Stasis because fuck. people people are trolling each other by stasis fucking that for a whole hour. It's like, God, I can't end the game because I'm just in stasis. My whole no, it's okay, man. There'll be a hard cap limit on the game. So there's, you stasis fuck for an hour and a half. Yeah, literally ends. nothing that you can do at all. Like, nope. All right. Sorry, guys. All right. So I, I think with that, I like the idea of autumn, if you put a stasis word within range of of already stasis units it blows it up and we know they don't stack it doesn't refresh it that seems like a simple change to make it so you can't chain them because my, my thing is though like what the fuck is the problem like we got chain fungals right we got chain fungals yeah, that's fine but, yeah but you know they, they, they can't just can't, keep doing it over and over and it's still yeah. a projectile yeah, Bl blizzard thinks it's blizzard thought it was better to just have the whole army die rather than <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's go on to nero all right, so let's talk about the Brood war Lord. Range increased oh, to 11 God. and no longer has the Frenzied passive. Give the Tempest back, please. Primarily, this is going to be influencing Zerg versus Zerg. Used to go stair-stepping Roach into Hydra. Now we have Roach, Ravager, Hydra, Lurker. Used to be you go Infester into Brood Lord. But now the Brood Lords are not Frenzied. Vipers. Vipers are a more fun unit anyway, so I'm really happy with this change. More range is for the Brood Lord. It's a better fighting unit. 
Can anybody use big air units anyway when the Viper can like I like no yeah. like, nobody's actually like shown in a in a broadcasted game like how ridiculously strong like four parasitic bombs are against any air army. Like assuming that you want to protect your brood lords, like unless you're using them as some sort of reverse siege behind spines, in which case I think there's other ways for the opposing Zerg to work around it. Like I still think that air compositions are really weird. I guess they could parasitic bomb each other. Well, the thing about parasitic bomb though is like, it's it's only does ninety. Well, I mean ninety damage is a lot of damage. But, but broodlords have okay. yeah, brood like the the problem with broodlords though like, like broodlords are really tricky. I, I think this is a great change by the way. Like I don't think there's anything wrong with it because the yeah. only other thing that it affects is when broodlords get fungled. Yeah. And the other thing is um, against mech players, I think this is actually a really nice buff for Zerg versus mech. Is that if uh, any anybody that like if you play. Broodlords versus mech or mech versus broodlords, you'll notice that the Thor's anti-air range is the same, or it's like just one more, I think. Like if broodlords are at like nine, Thor anti-air is at ten. So Thors can actually kill broodlords, like if you're pushing someone. Like if I do a big push and I have like six to eight Thors, I don't I can actually like focus fire down the broodlords my with my Thors. But once the first wave of broodlings is out, your Thors aren't moving anymore. So if they have eleven range, and assuming that you're pushing them, you've got creep spread so that you you can have vision to get the first wave off. And you're like in this really weird spot where you actually have to have Vikings in order to deal with it, or you know some new air unit or whatever. Mm. But I think that like that actually is a very interesting um, buff for Zerg against Mech. Okay, I like it. I like I it. I agree. That's awesome. Yeah, I didn't think about that much because don't Vikings they used to have the same range of Broodlord and Viking, right? Yeah, but you need all your Vikings to fire at once, and that means them being close together. And yeah, weren't they, weren't they nine point five though? Weren't Broodlords nine point five range, not nine? Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Th I'm pretty sure the 5. Thor anti air range is like ten though, though, so it's like it's it's still it's still yeah, the, well the Thor the still goal. Yeah. It still achieves the goal because e even that extra one range if uh, if you have like Hellions that are trying to help push through the Broodlings. Like, it's going to be much easier to use Broodlords against players with Thors. Yep. Totally. Cool. All right. So let's uh, let's continue this flow, because we got some cooler shit to talk about. Just kidding. Uh, Zealot Spreed Upgrade. Gemini, give me, the, give me the TLDR. What the fuck does this mean? 2.75 to 2.953. What does this mean for the Zealot in combat? It basically just means it gets to the target. Fat. Like, it does... Is, it's the base movement speed, not the actual charge speed, right? Well, they right. both go up. Only when upgraded, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, like, yeah. when so when you get zealot legs, it the like the like the increase it gives you is more than it used to be, correct? Yeah. Right now, it's as fast as a stalker. Um. I can't think of any like specific situations where this is like super better. It just kind of in general kind of cool, and it's nice to have zealots that are actually fast, like. In Brood War, it was like you got to like speed and it yeah. felt like it actually felt like your units were like zipping across the map and you could just go everywhere with them. Um, so I'm just I'm just curious to see what it actually looks like in game and some actual engagements and whatnot. Mm. But I can't like think off the top of my head of like because there's no like builds that revolve around charge. Like it was only like that in like wings where you'd go like one yeah. base and like, sell it. Well, you know when you're, you're just moving around the map with a bunch of gateway units, right? And yeah. your stalkers always end up in front because they're faster and everything. Yeah, so I mean, other than that, kind of like, fix that for like. There's a, I think there's another good, a good thing about this buff though for Protoss because the what, pe what people haven't considered is that the warp in nerfs harass a lot too. Yeah. So if your zealots, like, they don't need to move crazy faster. Like, it doesn't look that big on like the GIF of it or whatever. No, it, but it, if, it feels if more to, in game. Yeah, but if you have to warp in from further away because you take 200 percent damage. This actually helps with harassing because you might want to put your pile on, you know, not right in, in his face because the zealots are invulnerable. You might have to actually put outside his vision range, which allows the zealots to get in there a little bit faster. Or if you have to, if you're being attacked and you warp in on the other side of your base because you don't want it to be targeted down, at least they can get there a bit faster. So I think it helps. Uh, it helps. It's like a counter buff to the warp gate nerf. Yeah, that is a big That's deal, true. actually. I didn't yeah. really think about that. Yeah, because like in, in Brood War a lot, it, um, like you would make the units themselves, like that you don't warp them in. So like you would actually have huge zealot run bys going all over the place and whatnot. And so like in Starcraft too, you just you just warp them in right next to the base and they're right there. So like that makes that's like completely that makes a lot of sense. It makes it feels like ev like you can either have the pylon really far away and get to the base like quickly this at the same time you normally would. Or, or you don't even need the pylons anymore. You can just separate them from your main army a lot easier and like just be having them going all over the map and whatnot. I feel like that could buff harassment a lot really well. 
Cool. And and just to be clear too, just one last thing. Yep. They did say specifically whether the charge while charging speed will be faster as a result because charge, I think the way it works is you get 120% speed on the on the unit. So I think right. the actual charge itself may be faster if that's the way it's like. Oh, really? so yeah, it's it's I like really, really slight, slightly faster. Okay. I mean, that'll make it so you can like chase down like Hellions that are running away faster, like speed lanes or something. But... Jesus. 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 All right. Last thing to talk about is going back to you, Nero. Uh, lurker damage changed from 30 damage to 20 plus 10 versus armor. Thank God they did this. Oh, Seriously, my God. Right? Yep. I mean, Nero, I didn't realize that was even also, I want to note that Nero is a great ventriloquist and has been speaking through us this whole time. It's very fantastic. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This uh, nerf actually hits pretty hard, especially against bio. The lurker just feels like a weaker unit. Some situations like versus armored unaffected, but against things like mass adept, you would think that the lurker would be an effective counter unit since it's a 2.5 tier unit, but the adepts can kind of just run up, dash around, and then kill the lurkers. So how many lurkers do you actually have to build to threaten bio at this point? It seems like I, a pretty good kind of weird. Uh, yeah, but if you tried to play bio versus someone who could actually get like six to eight lurkers, like if they had six or more lurkers, and they siege a position that you're not is touching some, it. somewhere you have to attack. You cannot attack it with bio. Like, assuming that the Zerg player has a brain and doesn't only have six circles, like they're pushing you. Like a Zerg player is pushing you. They've got hydras, maybe some lings or roaches, and like six to six to eight lurkers, like burrowed in a reasonably strategic position. Like you are not going to be able to press that without using medevacs to move tanks in position because the lurkers unburrow as fast as roaches. They burrow maybe a little bit slower, but like moving around isn't an issue for them as far as retreating goes. Like this buff is really big because I don't, as this is like one of the only ways you're going to see, like this maybe helps bio come back into play. And I'm still not even convinced. I think this is more for the, for ZVZ. And I think it'll help more against Protoss. Like the adept thing is like a kind of a interesting point, but I think that the adept is like super impossible to kill with most units anyway. Like you think, I am the deal with the deaths, man. Deaths. man. I've, I've played some really good Protosses that fuck my mech with, like, they just have, like, six Adepts shut down, like, a 10 Hellion run by. Are you serious? Damage. Adepts are really fucking good, against, even against Blue Flame Hellions. Like, they're, Adepts are really, really, like, I don't know, man. People probably just don't like building them, and they'd rather just say they're bad. But after the I last like boss, building, man. they've been getting better, man. There's, like, a push. Like I don't know. I, I don't know if any of you guys have, like, played versus this, but there's, like, a push that's, like, I, I at least was like maybe when I was playing beta like last week, like it was kind of weird. Like it's like a two base. I've like seen people like rush up to like a big like seven gate adept shield rush with like fast armor. Like they open forge to stop like any mines or anything. And they basically just rush right up to like plus two with the shields and the adepts have like so much health they're like fucking impossible to That's kill. Crazy. It's pretty cool. I, if I try, I can't, I actually like it crushes all my bio openings. Like I feel like I have to play cyclone which is still really, really tricky versus any yeah. air units. I heard in PvP, too, they're, like, really crazy. Like crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every PvP is, like, you should always open Adept. It's so, it's, it's so strong. Yeah. And stalkers can't, stalkers can't kill Adepts. Like, it, no. it takes forever. Neither can a mothership. So. Yep. They're pretty... It's funny, because, like, way, like, when it first started, like, every Protoss pretty much said, like, you can never build Adepts in PvP. Like, you literally, if you do, you lose. Like, it's stupid. I think, yeah, Two-Gate Adept is, like, the most popular the, build that, I, that I've seen, insane. and it's all I use. Well, yeah, yeah, it was it's just really a really good. big buff. Like, hit points is so, like, it, buffing hit points is fucking huge. Like, yeah. it's gigantic. I need to play around with people. And the attack point. Yeah, the yeah, attack point, too. They're so much easier to micro. micro. All right, guys. That, that should have happened, though. That was awful. 400.4 <laughs> fucking damage point. That was awful. That felt like shit. Yeah. yeah that, that was, was the bad. most awkward thing to micro in the existence oh. forever. Like, holy shit, that was so weird. Well, hey, they fixed it quickly, didn't they? I mean, all things considered. So. Yeah, man. Yeah, for Blizzard, that was really... Did. Yeah, <laughs> for, for Blizzard standards, that was a pretty thick quick. Or yeah. Quick. Steven. Yeah, what up, buddy? So, well, let's talk about something <laughs> that you might... Let's talk about something you might be interested in. Uh, fucking Crepo, man. He is one I handsome. We weren't talking about league. Oh no, we're talking about league. Is Crepo not fucking handsome? Like he lost a little bit of weight. He cut his hair. He's got that like short on the side, long on the top thing going on. 
I don't even know who the fuck Crepe Boy yeah. is. Yeah, what? <laughs> Steve, really? Are we, oh, I, are we, is this like some sort of like passive aggressive thing at Steven League or? No, no, this is totally. Well, why are we making fun of Zombie Grub? She hasn't talked in a while. What the fuck? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. What hey, are you doing, Zombie hey, Grub? Don't, don't, don't project. <laughs> zombie Grub, do you think that Crepe is really hot now? Come on. <laughs> I don't even know How who come that Destiny is. never talks. <laughs> So anyway, uh, yeah, he, he's like this, like just Aryan prince. I don't know. He's pretty hot. Anyway, so we're uh, we're past the uh, the scheduled we're past the scheduled topics. Oh, one more thing though is I do want to nag Zombie Grove. Any more awesome things coming up for uh, Base Trade TV, uh, the event that you can leak? Yeah. Well, I mean, we updated the Kickstarter stretch goals, so now this man. Actually, I don't even think I'm on camera. That guy just flexing right now. He's gonna come and cast if we can get a uh, thousand more dollars. Oh shit! Well, give us that link. Give us the link in the thing, and I'll link it in the thing. Uh, yeah, there you go. And of course, our T-shirt sales for Teespring that has the really awesome "Hell It's a Boat Time" logo on it. It's a boat time. Yeah, it's uh, they're on uh, they're for sale at Teespring, and um, only for like the next eight days. But all of our all the money we get from that is also gonna go towards funding the event. Dude, Jesus Christ! I didn't know that. You, I did not know that. You guys have so like you're almost at twenty thousand dollars. So much money. Wow. Well, this is awesome. So it's like yeah. almost eighteen thousand USD, and then we also have the uh, we didn't add on because we can't technically, but we have all the donations from our PayPal, which we both gave up our PayPal like on the Base Trade TV and just linked it to a uh, a fund for the tournament. So that's a, a lot of extra cash there. So Tommy Grub, can you can you please tell people I didn't demand a thousand dollar feed? The chat's like blowing up. It's like, well, you know, there's like a hotel room and plane ticket. No, that's just for his plane ticket. He's gonna sleep underneath my bed. Fucking sell out. <laughs> We're gonna eat jello together, apparently. Fucking. Oh, Everyone's okay. watching this. All right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what is the is the reason that you're at nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars ninety nine cents because um, there's like some weird tax thing at ten thousand dollars or? Uh, so oh, Blizzard doesn't if. Blizzard Blizzard, if you get ten thousand dollar prize pool and over, Blizzard has to get involved, basically. And we okay. Need a license. I thought you need just needed a license, yeah. So, well, we thought it'd be like a lot more fun. Like, even if we could like reasonably do it, and we could also like get WCS points or something, that like, we'd really like actually put everything in the prize pool. We didn't really want to. We wanted to be like an awesome, fun event and have nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars as the prize is just kind of freaky. It's kind of stupid funny. <laughs> no, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, You're yeah. going to get 33 cents in your prize check. <laughs> <Go> so, <laughs> all right. So the reason there's one other topic I wanted to talk about, but um, I actually had to make sure we cut the sh show short in 20 minutes and it's definitely more than a 20 minute topic. So we will save it for next time and I'm going to bring it up right now. Um, but what I do want to talk about is the Avengers. I've asked everyone here what if the they see them. So, we're not going to talk about StarCraft. Are you fucking well, We're going to talk about Avengers. We're not going to talk okay, about their reconsidering talk. the ghost snipe change or anything. Let him talk. Like that. Sorry, Wait, are they? Because where did I? Where did you see yeah, that? Yeah, they're reconsidering did you read the, the patch notes, snipe? dude. Jesus <laughs> fuck, like, did you keep up on it? <laughs> <laughs> fuck. fuck the ghost. Oh, get rid of it. Get rid of. I didn't snipe. see anything in that. I saw like this shit about the interface. I didn't see anything about. That nerf about... was all fucked from the start. Yeah, man, for snipe. sure. For sure, man. Like, I'm glad they're reconsidering the fucking ghost. They night. really like the ghost should just be like switched around entirely. Like the ghost just needs like a like a, a role change. Serious. What you do? You know what need to do? They need to get I wanna, the, the rollerblade really? skin like, from Nova. I'm tired. I'm tired of. I'm tired of hearing this shit from Blizzard. Okay, that it's like we don't have to bring in old shit. Okay, I think the lurker is one of the coolest fucking things ever. Yes. And if there's a way to if there's a way to Fuck, safely yes. get lurkers before your opponent builds enough roaches to kill you, ZBZ is gonna get so much better to watch at the pro level. Yes. Like, Hell yes. real, like real talk. If you can, like, if you can make it there before the other guy has enough roaches to just insta wreck you, because that's all ZBZ is in Heart of the Swarm. Like, oh, like go, okay, it's this, it's this avoiding brood war shit. All right, yeah. we fucking give it, get rid of snipe because EMP serves the same exact role, and as a, EMP is like a little bit trickier, and uh, get rid of and add, give him fucking lockdown. Okay, Fuck yes. I don't care, I don't care yeah. if they want to make the ghost cost 200, 200. Give him lockdown because first of all. It allows you to build the ghost in a matchup that isn't PvP because they suddenly become very useful in Terran versus Terran. Some guys fucking flying medevacs around with siege tanks in them and mm. shit in. Well, do you know he built two fucking ghosts in your army? Lock down the medevac holding the tank in the air and shoot that shit out that of. That was a great guy. spell. 
That was like, a great spot. Lock, like, Lockdown creates a lot of really cool moments, in my opinion. Like, at least it has the opportunity to, especially since you're going to see players going for um, carriers a lot more uh, when you're playing Terran versus Protoss when the game goes long. It's a yeah. great complementary unit to mech that also fixes the any air issue without needing to make the cyclone fucking retarded. So that that fix that's like you've taken out like three different things at once. Okay, that'll never work against Zerg because you know you need your barracks to build Marines or whatever. But then the other change, you know, just sc score some fanboy points and whatever this anti air unit that has a fast light attack that tears a clumps of units very well. Hmm. <laughs> just call it a Valkyrie and just call, give it a buff so that people at least have something to circle jerk over. Like, like lockdown. Oh my god. Like there should be a massive campaign pushing for this because the ghost is so underused. Like it is so absolutely terrible, boring, awful unit. The only situation I ever build fucking ghosts in and that any pro gamer builds ghosts in is when they need it to deal with storm or force fields for like an SCV pull. No one's like you know, I think having a couple ghosts in my army in Terran versus Terran would be useful. Yeah, because you're going to fucking EMP all of his medevacs in one big clump while you fucking lose the game because you didn't have any tanks or medevacs because ghosts cost a ridiculous amount of... No, no. Like, give him some actual really legitimate... Give him the fence matrix, too. Just make it into the next science vessel. Yeah, get rid of, <laughs> get rid of You know, if they don't want point defense drone, just make point defense drone the def defense matrix. Boom, there you I go. would love if the Raven was a science vessel. Science vessel had awesome acceleration. It was a Can cool we just, unit. Can we just... Let's play cool spells. <laughs> I'm switching games. <laughs> I think lockdown. I think lockdown would be really, really fucking awesome in Legacy of the Void. It's like that one thing I want to see to deal with because you can fucking there'll be like moments where like you can't you some guy will you know some guy will lock down a disruptor before it triggers or some shit and you know, it'll be like you know. Terran gets a lot like, of boosters, right? Like I like boost vax and then like the banshees have boosters and the reapers even had boosters at one time. I want ghosts to have boosters, like on roller skates. <laughs> That's the worst thing about them is losing all of them while your bio sims away. Yeah, they, they already have they already have that unit model because uh because of heroes of the passion, right? Just just bring in the <laughs> exactly. Nova's got roller skates in one of her skins. Don't ask me why I know that. And then <laughs> boom, boom, you're fucking ghosts, man. Give them three movement speed because why the fuck not? Easy. <laughs> Fucking Nathaniel oh, saving Starcraft too. So bad. But honestly, uh, Ghost would be nice. A functional Ghost. I I didn't see it though. I saw yeah. the stuff about the interface and I was like, oh, that's all this is about. And then I closed it. Was out. that what you wanted to bring up, or did we just bring uh, that up? On no, our... no. What I wanted to bring up was so I guess no one wants to talk about the Avengers. So we'll just no bring one up wants the, to talk about the, Avengers. the other stuff. So Dude, you didn't hear our Harry Potter conversation. That's why you're so against it. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Harry Potter conversation was fucking tits Good McGee. God. I kind of uh, I missed out on that, dude. I read all the books. Fuck. Well, yeah, Steven, was what was your question that started it all? Let's get it. Uh, let's get I, nice username's <laughs> opinion. <laughs> question for what? What was that uh, thing that you said exactly three weeks ago? Say it now. Was it three weeks ago? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Either way, guys. All right, Zombie Group. What didn't you like about the Avengers? It, wait, hold on. Time out. Oh, hold on. Time out. Spoilers. 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 If you're oh, watching. Wait. Pause it. I w we won't talk Wait, about it. Wait, does everybody not know that Iron Man dies in this? Is this <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thought, like everybody's everybody's heard this shit. Right. I will clear right. chat when no, because then someone will do it. I, I will type in chat when we're not going to talk about spoilers. So this is gonna go <laughs> so Nate. Zombie Grub. We, we were talking earlier. What didn't you like about the Avengers? There's so many things I didn't like. I went I went out of the movie theater thinking like it was an all right movie, but definitely wasn't impressive. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized I just really, really don't like the movie. Like. But first of all, Black Widow got like the worst fucking part. She got like so like you know like put in the back as like a love interest. Like in the and the whole discussion with him about being monsters is like weird and like off time. They tried to make us care about Hawkeye, making us take it to a farm, and I'm like I don't fucking care about Hawkeye. Like he didn't do anything in the last <laughs> Avengers movie. He's in his own movie or TV show. Why would the fuck would I care? And then like uh, what else? Like oh oh Ultron. Who's this big badass guy who could like go through the internet and like destroy our entire world just by like fucking up our technology? And so he like just says, "I want to do snappy one-liners." Like Joss Whedon actually took himself and put him in like a like a robot form and just like gave him a bunch of like funny one-liners. It was so annoying. And then fucking Iron Man. All right, like I don't know if you guys know this. You've read the comic books, but this is leading up to the Civil War. Yeah. Why they get a new Avengers team and Iron Man goes you know, goes away. He was fucking right, all right? I hate that. I hate that they made Iron Man right and Captain America wrong because Iron Man is the biggest douchebag in the world. He was literally made to be a superhero that you're not supposed to like and see if people would actually buy the fucking comics. And they made him right. And I just, I'm so worried. They're also gonna, I'm like, sorry. How can you not fucking not 
Dude, I love Tony Stark and I love Tommy, Robert Downey Jr. I was gonna say, are we talking about <laughs> Iron Man? <laughs> Iron Man is dumb, all right? In Civil War, he's going to ask all the superheroes to reveal themselves. And people are gonna be like, no, Tony, no. Like Captain America, it's gonna be Captain oh, America really versus right. Iron Man. And Iron Man wins. Captain America sees that all the destruction's going around and he's like, oh, this is bad for everyone. So maybe I should just give up on the thing. So you have a bunch of like fucking like retcons going on in the like Marvel universe where like Spider-Man has to forget about Mary Jane or else Aunt May will die because he revealed himself because Tony Stark told him to. Like it just makes you so mad the way that they're going with this. And like the actual movie itself was just like so many fucking characters. And everyone just got like 15 minutes of screen time and i was like oh well like bye okay there you go okay i thought the later. romance stuff kind of derailed the movie like it was a lull in the action and it stuff was. like that i mean it kind of made sense like i actually like i'm like i like you know bruce banner and and uh black widow fine enough but the way that they actually put it in there they're already cramming so much shit in there you want to talk about black like, widow let's talk about scarlett johansson and how she is absolutely gorgeous and they didn't show enough of her so what yes I, I completely agree exactly. with you I, she I was pregnant when they were filming, so she had 12 body doubles on set at a given time. Most of the dialogue scenes, you'll notice she's like against a rail, so you can't see her lower body. Pretty interesting that a sterile character is being acted out. Like a woman. <laughs> yeah. right there. That is interesting. <laughs> that is interesting. Well, so... Well, well done, Nero. Well done. <laughs> wait, so what this means... Wait, what this means is that there are 12 other women with... Butts as beautiful as Scarlett Johansson's in this world. Oh my god! Ballpark right now. Black Widow got so shafted. She got shafted in the movie, and she gets shafted everywhere else. Okay, so here's like the funny thing, right? I like like hashtag feminism, whatever. I don't fucking care. Like <laughs> Black Widow, so okay, funny. is this awesome badass who like went through a bunch of fucking like training where she killed other like little girls to survive. Okay, you guys watch Agent Carter to find another one like her. And then, like, they don't want to give her a movie. And they don't even want to include her in the toys. You know, there's, like, the Avengers pack, and there's no Black Widow, because who the fuck wants a female toy, right? And then they I had, had like, the, you know that scene, the really awesome scene where she comes out of the air, this, the airship on the motorcycle, and that's, like, her one cool scene in the movie? They have that exact toy, and it's fucking Captain America on the motorcycle. Like, what the fuck? No one Because the motorcycle is Captain Widow. America's thing. No, I don't no, the it, movie. It's movie. actually the space, it, like the actual no, aircraft from the movie, where she gets down on the motorcycle. Huh? There's okay. a toy I was like that. Say, yeah. yeah. Sure Captain America rides a motorcycle out of a plane in his movie, but I don't know if it was the same plane. It's from the Age of Ultron merchandise collection, so I'm pretty sure wow. they just fucking replaced Black Widow, and was like, yeah, no one really cares about her, but you should because she's awesome and I'm just like a love character. Jesus. I feel like a movie gets a little bit weird because there's like very obvious power differentials between. A lot of the characters. Oh, like uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye are both. Well, yeah, like yeah, like Black Widow and Hawkeye, and even to some extent, like Captain America are honestly like the way that it's written in the action scenes are went, it makes them look kind of even, but not not really even close at all. Like the Hulk is on like an entirely different level than pretty much everybody, and then you've got like Iron Man and oh, and Loki too is on like another level, and then like Iron Man is in there somewhere, and then you've got like the guy with the bow, and then you've got Hawkeye, and it's like it seems kind of weird that I don't know, it, it seems like they don't fit at all no no i got the same like it's just it's way too many people of like different like situations for power yeah levels. like completely different tiers okay i thought the Together. i thought the scene with the uh the whole hulk shit like the what's it called the system the green or whatever or bullshit the the, what? the one that's in space and it comes down and like it's Jason the next Oh, oh, you mean uh, something else entirely? The prison, the prison thing that that. Trump yeah, called. and like that suit uh, and yeah, all that stuff. It was like a woman's Never mind. name. Yeah, like, like or something. yeah, I thought that was pretty badass. <laughs> that was kind of cool. cool. That was cool. And it makes sense. Yeah. Like you know, you got to think the Hulk. They're letting the Hulk free. They're taking him places to to kick ass. And they need a way to handle him. And I, I liked that they had you know brought that out. One thing I really liked is it when the way you watch the Hulk lose his shit. It is complete pure blind rage, and they really captured that very well there's no like there's no sensible like i'm thinking about what i'm doing and that's why i'm destroying it is just constant there is no pause between him beating the shit out of something no thought like when nate streams sometimes <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, most I of the wcs it. casters really get angry on stream uh when they go on tilt so. i love it though i love it, it um it, they're human fun. Yeah, it's fun. It's the passion, man. Yeah. The passion gets intense. But either way, I thought that if they had taken the love shit out, I really liked it. I liked that Jarvis's voice, you know, got to be the uh, what's his name? I don't even know the name of that. Oh superhero. yeah, that that actor is in a bunch of things. Like, um, Nice Tale was his first big 
appearance, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't like that. Uh, I don't like the new voice of his artificial intelligence. It's not because it's a woman. It's just I don't like it. It's like oh. an Irish chick, and it's. Well, I thought they sh it should just be like the actual Jarvis. Like, I don't know if you guys actually watch Agent Carter. I brought it up. No, I I haven't Jarvis seen. Jarvis is in Agent Carter. Is he? Yeah, that's who. We, like his dad had a like a butler basically. That was named J uh, Jarvis that would do anything that his dad wanted. And Jarvis, I mean Jarvis was a character in the comic books too, right? It's been around for a while. Like he, he I haven't was... actually read that many comics except fucking Civil War, and it was a mistake. <laughs> you know, the only comics I've fully read are Deadpool, and I can't wait for that movie. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Anyone, anyone else Deadpool fan? No? He's a fantastic character concept. He's one of the few that breaks the fourth wall and speaks to the audience, so that'll be a nice change of pace. I knew yeah, Nero like would idea. like Deadpool. There I we like go. the idea of Deadpool. I just don't... He's badass. He's all right. They did a, <laughs> they did a preview with him. Um, what's that guy from Saved by the Bell? Mario Lopez. And like he's Mario Lopez is doing an interview with uh, the actor who plays Deadpool, and then Deadpool smacks Mario Lopez over the head with a chair. It was pretty good. Slater getting wrecked. I know what you're talking about. I saw that YouTube video. Yeah, yeah. I saw it. It was cool. That's cool. I can't find this toy zombie grub, the Captain oh, America the... one. Uh, well, let me go look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't believe you. I just kind of want it. So. I don't I know. Keep when I see the Black Widow, I just want to say Widow Mine. So you like no idea how hard it was. Like, hey, Widow Mine, that's a StarCraft thing. That's a StarCraft yep, show. Yep. Hey, hey, listen, I had a really important question, actually. Um, it was in the Reddit comments. I just want to make sure we can address that. Mm hmm. Yeah, so. Go ahead. Uh, and it is. As he lives up. So, oh, uh, Gemini, right. I'm pretty sure you know the question. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, shit. You want to repeat for everyone? Because I, I don't know. Just ask the question. I, Oh, my question? Yeah, let's see. Um, where was it? Let's see here. Um, yeah, so nice username. How does it feel being known? That's not the fun. That's uh, not that's, the, that's the, that's the important question. question. I'm pretty sure that's what you were referring to, was it not? Okay, Gemini. <laughs> where are the results, man? Oh, you're, you're doing that? Oh, okay. Um, oh, here well, he, he just beat Inno in uh, SPL, so I don't know. All right, this joke totally fucking bomb. Let's go back to Avengers. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> Wait, actually, what was the <laughs> I can finish it now. Jesus Christ, we're like halfway into the fucking forest. <laughs> <laughs> Just shitting on Hero because Gemini's such a fanboy. That's about it, though. Okay, nice, nice try, dude. I, I tried. Real, I tried so hard. A for effort. All right, so oh, let's 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 do the not. questions. Let's do the questions since we derailed the the Avengers con stuff. We so we don't need any more Avengers. So no more Avengers. Please. All right. There wasn't uh, enough uh, like uh, controversy because apparently you like Snape and I really hated Snape. Oh know? yeah, I fucking love Snape. Apparently everyone Snape. didn't really care. What does Snape have to do with the Snape. Avengers? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is why he brought up the topic, right? Because like the Harry Potter talk was so fun. We're getting we're getting meta. What is the meta? When game? Harry Potter was like a story and like there was seven books and there was all sorts of shit to talk about. The Avengers is just like a fucking action movie. And what, everyone what actually watched Harry Potter and shit. <laughs> yeah. So all right. Uh, fucking questions. Destiny. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you bored of playing League? Are you bored of playing League of Legends? I barely see you stream playing it. Uh, and are you? And when you are, you seem really mad at it. If so, what other games are you interested in? How the fuck is mad and bored the same thing? I'm not bored at all. I'm mad as fuck. Though. I fucking hate <laughs> team games, dude. Team games is the worst fucking thing in the history of all of mankind. Uh, Destiny was teaching his viewership a life lesson on H1Z1. He drops down in a parachute. He oh, sets God. up his push to talk button and he's like, Is this working? Push to talk, okay. Hey, 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 guy in the truck. And he's like running around and he says, No, 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 no. Truth, truth, truth. I won't show you. And then boom, he shoots him immediately. Welcome to gaming, son. <laughs> in the battle, everyone has weapons and shit. Like, <laughs> there's no friendship there. These are the trenches. I hope, I hope that person really learned. It reminds me of a few Daisy clips from Destiny, also. Wow. <clears throat> I've never uh, I've never played DZ, and the only clip I've ever watched was Fenner <laughs> hunting a guy and then getting a T-shirt, I guess, when he killed him. Google Destiny Daisy at the end of this. You'll laugh. Okay. Oh, uh, with that like headshot. Wait, is this is this more of the content you stole from Destiny? <laughs> no, <laughs> I missed out on those, but don't worry, I'll find some other shit. <laughs> um. All right, so let's see what else we got. Uh, da, 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 da. uh Steven, you're. Destiny 2 tournament, everyone's excited for it. You know, uh, it's actually, it hasn't been brought up in several weeks. Um, so just to answer this question, uh, are you waiting until the game is actually released? You're gonna wait for it to be more balanced. I don't know, dude. I'm just kind of chilling. I'm 
<laughs> this is like this is not an appropriate topic for this show. <laughs> okay. I feel like Starcraft is like dead as fuck. I don't think Legacy of the Board is gonna help at all, so I don't know. I'm just gonna like chill. Are you gonna make Destiny 2 be a League of Legends tournament? I, no, no, shut I, I don't up. think I would ever do a League tournament. It's <laughs> like the way that Riot has the scene set up. No, let's do it. Let's make it a Counter Strike tournament. Bro. Yeah, let's play some up with Kappa Star, Star League. League. Okay, so real, really though, are you kind of over it? Or are you you kind of like, eh, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't think Legacy of the Void. I don't think the bump that we're gonna get when Legacy of the Void launches. I don't even think it's gonna be as big as the bump when Heart of the Swarm launched. I feel you. I but, mean, I can, I can see that. But yeah. so you so you're not even that sure on the tournament anymore. It's kind of like. Whatever. Well, I mean, I don't. If I, it's hard if I don't give a fuck about. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm just trying to difficult. get inside your head a little bit, for sure, man. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Just gotta give it some more time. See how, like, support, when it drops, that's when we'll really know when the game actually releases and shit. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, we're pre-flop right now. We'll see how the flop lands, and then you have the turn in the river of them continuing to balance and adjust the game over time. There are too many variables that we don't have yet, so it's hard to say. Jess. Yeah. What? All right, so is is you... Well, is you. Jesus Christ. Mm. Let, let's think about this for a second. Do you think that maybe, like, there... I don't... I'm not a psychologist. Nero, you are. Or you were a psych major, I think. <laughs> what? Cognitive science. There we go. Okay. So, close enough. Maybe no, there is, the maybe thing. there's an, a completely not sexist marketing reason why Black Widow was taken out of mar merchandise. No, they've actually like there was an announcement made by Disney saying that they just think that it won't sell as well because. Well, what kind of a toy do you make out of Black Widow? What the fuck? Same thing. Well, like, no, the, so the, they. Get, like, guns. Well, Hawk gets like a bow and shit. You can, like shoot arrows, so right? So you get guns with Black Widow. You ever a gun for kids, Jesus? <laughs> well, no. So the, the you already get guns for kids. The toy, the G.I. Joe. This specific toy, it's a toy directly from the scene of a movie. It's where the motorcycle drops down. Now, granted, that motorcycle is Captain America's motorcycle, and it's a different motorcycle than the one that Black widow drop down on but uh either way i mean if they if it was a marketing decision are we going to really get upset about it like Wait, what if, it, if i feel like there's this whole world of like black widow that zombie grim knows about because she's read comics but i only know black widow because i've seen her in the adventure movies and she's really like a boring as fuck character that i can <laughs> so i feel like there's like a so difference hawkeye though like that's like that's only oh yeah no no i agree with hawkeye too I like if they her. did like only captain america iron man and the hulk and that was it i'd be like oh, okay i guess but like i can see making hawkeye a toy because he has like a bow and arrow like you put the bows and the toy has to you can shoot arrows or whatever so it's like whatever like that's like a cool gimmick kind of thing but like for hawkeye like just giving her like a handgun it seems everything seems really generic with like how you would do it as a toy i think it's like really i don't even know what their toys actually are like just i figured hawkeye was just like you can't even actually use the fucking arrow i can't even imagine a to a hawkeye toy i've never had a toy that shot a bow and arrow it really? was always I had a gun. archer from a, a small like what, what, what was it? Oh my god, to, um, small soldiers or whatever. Yeah, small yes, soldiers. I, I had, had I had archer. I did too. I had archer and um, Chip Hazard, Major Chip Hazard. Uh, oh my man. god. I love that movie, man. That was a that was a <laughs> badass movie. It was really good. It was. I want to watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> I love those toys, I love man. I had a bunch of them. Yeah, I only had yeah, those two. I, 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 I have fucking. Chip well, has it. So like, <laughs> the Black Widow though, like, uh, for like, if you if you didn't watch Agent Carter, then it also makes sense, right? Because that's just like, I'm not pulling a lot because I never read block, I've never read Black Widow comics. Mm -hmm. I'm pulling from everything else, and how like she could be like a really awesome character, but instead she's just like kind of like the chick that's over there doing some things. I feel okay. like that's just like classic normal shit. No, it's, it's just it's like oh, I feel like she was. I feel like in Avengers one, one, I feel like she was a little are. bit more interesting because she, she had like her cunning shit. Like she was like she was a super sneaky, too spooky person that snuck into uh, the Iron Man dude shit. Or actually, that wait, that might have been in the Iron Man two movie that I'm thinking of instead of the actual Avengers, where she like. Well, she was, but like in the yeah. Avengers, she like uh, she like realized what Loki's plan was. Yeah, and she, she tricked Loki uh, by being a little sneaker. But like in the Avengers two, she kind of like got Karaganized. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she kind of became really boring and flat. Yeah. 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 Poor Karagan. Like and like without like their without like her cunning like. Again, like I don't, I don't know. I just felt like it was kind of really ridiculous watching like fight scenes where you'd have like Hawkeye and like uh, Black Widow like jumping around, and then you've got like Captain America blowing up lots of people, and you have like the fucking Hulk and Iron Man and Loki, who are like Goku fucking SSG, <laughs> and, like, up. and then like Black Eye and Hawk, Hawk Widow, or like fucking Yamcha is like running around doing nothing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yamcha, <laughs> Krillin of uh, the Avengers, Krillin, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Oh my god. 
Yeah, I just want to make it clear, like, you know, that was, like, that was the thing that I, like, ranted about the most because I think it's really stupid, but, like, I had, like, you know, like, five other reasons why I didn't like the movie, so... It's not, like, just well, why, because, why like, no, like Black it? Widow. I thought I it was, like, okay, like... Ultron, like, I didn't like how much, like, he was, like, kind of a cheesy one-liner dude, like, it wasn't even actually that scary. I, I like, like the a, Joss like, Whedon comment you made. <clears throat> yeah, like, that's exactly what it was, like, it wasn't actually that scary, I didn't really like him as a main, as a main villain. I mean, Loki's kind of like, I don't know, I don't like Loki either, but at least he like, you know, is just like pure evil and I actually hate the guy and I want him to die. Um, uh, what were the other ones that I, that I said? I had like a list I sent to liking before it even happened. <laughs> yeah, I, I, did, I feel like Ultron oh. stuff wasn't explained as well. Like it kind of seemed weird. Like He had a pretty yeah. deep well, storyline in the comics and it, it was, like, really explained. didn't get fleshed out. Yeah, well, he also could, like, connect to, like, the internet and what, it, like, he could do anything he wanted with technology, but he, his goal was on making his own body, like, even more perfect, so you had this, like, ultimate, like, evil character who could do whatever he wanted, and he was just like, I really want a new body. So. Main thing to gather about his character is he's purely information-based, he doesn't have the same sense of empathy from one organism to another. We see, you know, the human, we see their face, we see things in common with them. He sees humans and their meat bags, they're different from him. Yeah. So the cool thing to notice is the way that he spoke, the language he used, choice of words is close to Iron Man's character because he drew from that data set. Yep. Was yeah, which they like hint at like one or two times, but then it never seems like it's yeah, It was like a, like a, your disappointing dad or something like that when he first yeah. found him. But then if that was the way they were going to do it, they could have fleshed it out a lot more and it would have been a lot more interesting. Yeah, yeah, like that's what I like. That would have been interesting because they talked about how like, um, well, you think Ultron is bad, but everything he gets is from the Avengers, you know? So it would have been more yeah. interesting to see like whether through cinematography or actual plot devices to see like Ultron do That's... stuff that like Tony Stark had done like as Iron Man and then you could say like in another light like oh well this is actually really fucked up or whatever. Really That's why like I didn't like Iron Man ended up being right too. Like I realized that that was the way they were going to get their new character the, the new guy or whatever. That's fine. But like you know there was this whole line of you know Ultron is part of Iron Man and he's kind of a terrible guy and then Scarlet Witch asked Captain America like what do you, you think he's going to do the right thing? Like why would you think that? And Captain went to kind of try and stop Iron Man. But then it was kind of the right thing anyway. Yeah, and it ended up being the right thing. And I was like, oh, come on. So what's, like, the message or what's the lesson learned? Yeah, I didn't really think there was... It, like, they, they had so many things to tie together and they had so many people to tie together that everything just got, like, squashed, like, 15-minute segments where you either understood it and, like, analyze it yourself or you were just, like... Okay, that wasn't really explained that well. Like, okay, I guess. Yeah, and then what happened? Like, Thor, like, jumped off to his universe and then came back just yeah. <laughs> time to create the dude. I don't... Was that ever yeah. really explained? No, like, uh, I... there's actually... Joss Whedon actually, like, uh, said something about that, and that's... Um, he wanted... The scene was originally, like, 40 minutes long or something. Like, it was a huge part about Thor and his visions and, like, going into the pool. I didn't get anything about his visions at all. There were a yeah, bunch of black right? dudes from 300, and then, like, <laughs> needed to come back and, like, make the ultimate being. Yeah. But I didn't yeah. get, like, any... I didn't understand understand the why at all i don't so, know if i just missed that could it have been well such a cool scene if they like flesh that out a little bit more. so did you guys yeah. stay for the credits the like the mid credit you know oh, teaser yeah, with uh, what's his face with uh yeah i can't remember his name purple dude universe. with the chin yeah so at the <laughs> at the, the purple dude with the chin, <laughs> the chin. um fuck man what's his name <laughs> someone has to know it uh no uh, I prefer to call him the quim the crimson chin though, because that's, <laughs> that's the purple chin. Uh, just give me a second. I have to know this because there's a point to this. So you know they're they're talking about the um, Thanos. Thanos, thank you. Okay, so there's a picture of Thanos uh, from a comic book where Thanos has the Infinity Stones in his hand, right? And at the end yeah. of the movie, uh, Thor was all like, you know, two Infinity Stones have shown up in less than blah, blah, blah. This isn't a coincidence. So I'm curious to see what happens with Thanos. And, uh, you know. Well, Thanos probably had something to do with the Infinity Stones coming around. I mean, that would be my guess. He's like the ultimate ultimate badass, right? Like, he's been hinted at in other movies, just like Guardians of the Galaxy too. So. I haven't seen that yet. Oh, <laughs> right. Wait, there's a Guardians Is of the Galaxy a spoiler? There's a second one. There is going to be, but right now there's only one. No, no, no. She meant two. Oh, also, one okay. it as well. Oh, oh, oh! I was like, wait, I haven't. I've only seen the first one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched that movie way more than I felt I should have. <clears throat> Guardians. Of the I heard it was oh, awesome. It was a great movie. movie. No, yeah, like I movie. loved it, but yeah. I felt like it was meant for kids. What? Uh, really? What? Yeah. With all the old songs and the guy's CD player that are all from like the oh, fucking. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. For kids, not what? Even CD, you not even something CD, man. Deep. It's too new. It's too new. So yeah, that and I still haven't seen Winter Soldier yet. Winter so. Soldier that was actually like a pretty decent movie. I don't like or care for Captain America like at all. I don't follow any of that shit. I thought that was a pretty good movie. I really Do like. You like Whiplash, Destiny. <laughs> nice <sorry>. meme. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, well, let's. Man, that's gonna be awesome. <laughs> yeah. So let's. Uh, let's see. Sorry, guys. I don't think it's gonna be 
Yeah. Anyway, derailed showed is derailed, Kappa. <laughs> so, uh, I, I guess people didn't get, you know, the whole, like, we've been going for two and a half hours and, you know, like, I wanted to take the show a little relaxed, less StarCraft two focus for the last half hour. But, hey, you know, uh, my I, I guess I lost my passion for the you last need, 30 you minutes. Need to name, you need to name this segment, like... I named it Miscellaneous, cool. and I figured... Mis no, you man, like, you need to come with, like, like a catchy... Like bullshit name. hour. Call it Bullshit <laughs> Hour. Guys, we're gonna start bullshit hour. We just talk about basically anything for the next yeah, I forty-five like that. to sixty minutes. There you go. Welcome to the just, late just, game just of the late game. Just on the overlay right now, yeah. exactly. Just, this is right. the bullshit oh, hour. People won't understand. My bad. My bad. Nice me. Yeah, man. Okay, so anyway, let's finish off these questions and then we'll we'll call it a night. Uh, all right, uh, Zombie Grub, how do you feel? about the possibility that the base trade TV event could be the only North American live event for StarCraft II in 2015. Uh, that's impossible because we're going to have the WCS stuff. So I assume he means... I know, he already failed pretty hardcore. Though. Yeah, I assume he means... It's not just the uh, WCS Toronto, it's also going to be Red Bull VC. Yeah, so... Dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> How do you feel about this thing that's totally not true? Uh, well, uh, Zombie Grub, we're waiting to hear your response. How does it feel? Yeah, yeah. All right, so... Uh, da, 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 da. That's not necessarily true. Do you, all right, does anyone on here think that too many slots are offered in WCS for China? For China? Is it like two or four? Four, if I recall correctly. Fuck, the Chinese have taken enough slots in a they year. Have, they Why have... the fuck are they taking WCS <laughs> in two? Oh, it's fucking believable. <laughs> It, uh, the partnerships, as far as I'm aware, with like the Chinese scene are pretty big. As far as like the companies like Netties or whatever, um, the Chinese scene is also, like, I don't know, as from like from like I was speaking to, like guys like Invictus Gaming, like they're working really hard to push that stuff forward. They really want to compete in international tournaments. Obviously, it's really difficult. Like yeah. when you consider all the things that get in your way, being Chinese, like not being able to access like a fuck ton of you know websites, probably half the ones you would use to sign up. You know, it's difficult to follow all the esports through Twitter drama when Twitter is blocked by your government. So, ooh, uh, shots fired. I mean, I mean, well, no, that's not. No, I know, kidding. I know, I know. If there are obstacles. There are obstacles in the way. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. The Chinese scene is is like it's just like that area that we don't know as much about yet, and hopefully, we slowly do. Like yeah. the Chinese, yeah. I I'm feel really like this are pretty cool. Them spots in, it's in good. Places. It's very, very good. I think this yeah. this question might be more like not like you know like let's screw them over. It's more like. Aren't they screwing NA over? Because that's like NA is no. the one that like everyone. Fit I think the in. rules, the rules, the rules have clearly hurt NA more than anything else. Like there, are, there are good NA players that have made it into Premier and made reasonably deep runs. The only thing limiting the number of players in the NA slot right now are just like, uh, like I don't even know if it's like technically an issue, right? Because it's like just get a visa and do it. Well, that's what you know? I feel like most people are like uh, always like because like Europe is basically just Europe, so everyone thinks that make, that makes sense. But then you go to NA and it's like a uh, C and in China and also South America, and then finally and actually like NA. All right, well that's that's all the questions. Uh, from that we did cover all but that one topic. We're gonna save it for next week. We'll talk about it again. Uh, as far as having this very large group of what eight people on. Now I actually, you know, like seventeen, people. Se seventeen, right? Yes. Uh, I, you know, I had two segments of the show, and the people I had on the first segment I really like, and I wanted to bring them on to the second segment. So yes, well, it's a little clust cluttered and uh, disorganized. I mean, I think it was fine. You know, we got the real hardcore StarCraft two serious talk knocked out of the way with a smaller group, and then we got into the the more expansive, fun stuff, and and so yeah, you know, we're not usually going to do it like this, but. I think it was fun. I'm glad I had you guys on. So Thanks, with that, uh, we're going to do outros and all that stuff. And uh, let's do this. So Zombie Grub, we'll start with you. Yeah. Uh, what's going on in your guys' world besides the uh, besides the B base trade TV stuff? Well, we're doing a lot of casting. We're casting with the English stream for the, the Lotus, Inv Lotus Invitational, I guess it's called. Um, which is Take TV's thing for Legacy mm -hmm. of the Void. It's 12 weeks, three days a week. It's awesome. Uh, lots of StarCraft and lots at of... At least almost 700 games, I think, at most. Like I think, yeah, yeah. So that's going to be a lot of casting, but, like, it's awkward for us, and I don't know if this is going to really work out or what, but, like, uh, we can't actually do the Saturday matches because we are committed to the Elena League. So mm -hmm. we do, like, the replays of the Saturdays after the Sundays. Jesus. Uh, it's like a, they're all best of fives, I think, too. So that's like uh, 
it's not necessarily a long day, but you get a lot of your favorite players, I guess that's way to put it. And uh, <clears throat> then we have our watch tournament, the Yord Watches, the 21st and 22nd. Steven, weren't you sponsored by them? Uh, they sponsored the Destiny 1 tournament. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Neuro, what about you? What are you up to? I'm working on a response to Winter's Blank Canvas video. Oh, God. It's <laughs> <laughs> nice. I've seen the blueprints. It's quite nice. Yeah, so basically, uh, it's not a blank canvas. If anyone has ever been to a blank canvas, it's a flat, white rectangle. Actually, <laughs> you're being attacked. And there are landscapes, there are cliffs, there are trees, bramble bushes, and all kinds of shit. There's an opponent who's looking to make your day as terrible as they possibly can. This is not painting class with Bob Ross. I mean, yeah, there are some mechanics that you can leverage that you would practice every game and that are kind of- Actually, don't, don't, I actually don't want you to explain it only because I, I want to be as, I want to take this as much of like I agree. experience as I can when it comes out. <laughs> it sounds like the kind of thing I don't want any spoilerinos on. Like, All right. I'm, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. When you said I'm working on a response to Winter's Blink Cam's video, that was that was all I wanted. That's probably the most pretentious <laughs> pretentious shit I've ever seen in StarCraft. Or, or, actually, I'd probably say in life, but all right. Don't stop. Keep saying what, what else, Nero? <clears throat> so there's that, and then I'll be working on a, a phone application where people can basically scroll through for an emotion, push a button for the emotion, and get some zen. People ask like the same repeated questions in stream, and they don't actually need Nero to answer yeah. them. You can just draw that up in an application it would be pretty cheap so that's probably like one year two years down the road for the first version hell yeah um yeah. and just to be clear i wasn't saying you were pretentious i was saying winner's video was pretentious i want to oh, make no, sure that, that was but uh that also be constructive criticism <laughs> uh real quick before we move on uh if you guys see the zombie grub spamming the link for teespring pretty sweet t-shirts has anyone ever bought one of these t-shirts from uh um the Teespring stuff, like in I mean, I, I people bought I, my T-shirt. What the fuck. Well, I bought your T-shirt, but it ha it isn't here, so I don't know what it feels like yet. Does it, anyone know if these are comfortable? If they fit nice, like if they're made small or large? I heard they run a little large. Uh, for women, so I don't know. Poop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, cool, Jack. Well, anyway, check those out. Buy one if you can. Jack Attack. What's going on with you? I'm doing some new shit. <laughs> um. So I was. I've never streamed myself and doing any of the videos because it's always sort of like no spoilers and just I figure out shit and I don't want anyone else to make the video before I make the video when I find something cool that I want to talk about. Um, but I've been streaming a lot and it's been sort of conflicting and it's been stopping me from making YouTube videos because I spend like, you know, three hours a day streaming, whatever. So I'm doing something new. I am streaming what it's like for me, the entire process of me making a video. So lots of like really like nitpicking and script writing and recording and re-recording and just sort of like behind the scenes of like what I do to make the video. Uh, so that way I get to hang out with everybody and talk about different stuff. And I also get to crowdsource a lot of the ideas. Like people in the chat will come up with like bronze science jokes and like, that's fucking awesome and put it in the script. So it's kind of like a little video making community thing. So if you want to check that out, that's uh, I'm streaming every day. It's Twitch TV, uh, twitch.tv slash Jack Tack TV. And my other shit is the same. Facebook.com slash Jack Tack TV, YouTube.com slash Jack Tack TV, Twitter.com slash Jack Tack TV at Jack Tack TV. If you want to send in a replay for me to cast, it's Jack Tack TV at gmail.com. If you want to send me money, it's Jack Tack TV at PayPal. And also if you want to support the shit that I do, go to patreon.com slash Jack Tack TV. Booyah Booyakasha. All right, cool. Jack Attack TV. Thank you. Gemini, what do you do? What do, you, do you stream? Where, where can people what find do you? What do you do? Seriously. Are you like a professional Redditor? Or... Yeah, dude. I, yeah, do I you get play paid, Karma? I get paid by Reddit to make a lot of Karma and then dispose <laughs> it in really dumb, stupid shit posts. Um, <laughs> so it's true. Uh, I'm on a community, uh, are all things Protoss over on Reddit. Um, so if you ever want to learn how to play Protoss, come submit replays or whatever you can go head over there um we're a nice friendly bunch usually so if you want to have your stuff analyzed or whatever do that um if you want to follow me on twitter and look at my stupid complaints about balance or how i'm losing passion for league or something follow me on uh g gemini 19 and uh thanks for liking for having me on but that's about it sometimes i'll stream at gemini sctv but i don't stream that much anymore but maybe in the future the thing that you should stream out. your uh, redditing. You could do crowdsourcing <laughs> like that. Yeah, that's true. I've never. That's an interesting. There you go. How should I type up this comment? 
It'll be great. That's the next big thing, man. <laughs> Let's see how fast I can get uh, Scion's Twitter onto Reddit for Karma. Easy Karma. So, cool, cool. And I, I say that because I do that. If I see Scion tweet, like, a balance update or something, I'm snatch it immediately right to Reddit. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that desperate. I actually come up with my own kind of things, you know. Oh, uh, well, I'm uncreative and just use other people to get Karma. So, anyway, nice username. He's still okay. there. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, lay it down on us. Where can people find you? What are you doing? Okay, I just make really dumb bullshit. I don't know. I don't have a good response to this. Um, I rip off Destiny stream, put it on my own YouTube. Um, I rip off other people's streams. <laughs> no, I'm actually not doing that anymore because, you know, it's not cool. So, I... Uh, I'm making my own stuff on YouTube slash nice YT channel. Uh, my Twitter is at nice underscore underscore username. Follow me. Um, fuck, man. I don't know what to say. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's kind of surreal, to be honest, because I spent many hours cutting out Steven saying fuck, shit, et cetera. <laughs> uh, so to actually be here on a show with him is, is fucking weird, man. You should, so I appreciate yeah, it. Like Why do you, wait, we've been like, we. I saw you in person. Yeah, I know. But dude, like, it's still like the fanboy in me is still there, oh, you know? Gotcha. Okay. Dude. Wow, how heartwarming. So <laughs> you know, you should, yo, Joe, you should highlight this one and like get all your cool witty segments from this one. Make a whole new video for that. My time, dude, not yours. Um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> That was quick. That's a good. I, I want to. This is what I him. deal with every day. And <laughs> me, me and Joe have like a good history. Uh, so yeah, no, really. Thanks again, man. I appreciate it. I'm a big fan of a lot of all of you except Gemini. Um, so yeah, thanks again. Let the Reddit wars begin. Uh, that was that was good. I like that. See, I'm not as witty as him, so I can't actually. Shut up, dude. <laughs> all right, cool. Hey guys, uh, so. If you uh, don't know, I run a weekly tournament, StarCraft II. Uh, it's currently running in Legacy of the Void. It's called the Lycan League, uh, very vainly named after myself. Uh, I fund the tournament myself. Uh, we do have a sponsor, Chairs for Gaming. Check them out. I, I have the chair. If you want any questions about the chair, answer. Please send me a DM. I will gladly answer them, or you can tweet me at LycanGTV. But anyway, I have Patreon for the, uh, for the prize pool for uh, the Lycan League, so if you want to contribute to that, it'll help me grow the prize pool, and it'll help me uh, take money that I'm spending on that and put it towards other uh, further projects, making more tournaments, perhaps, you know, doing different things. We'll see. But uh, So you just type the Patreon thing, and uh, Suede just posted it in the chat. Also, if you have Twitter, you can follow me at LycanGTV. The sponsors really like a, a young man with a lot of Twitter followers, so uh, you can cough up those follows. I would really like that. Uh, like I say every week, I take my Kamika Chan pillow right here, and uh, I'll print off your your all the new followers. Like it says, you've been followed by, and then it shows a bar of people. I put that bar of people right over her face, and then I sleep like this with it. And we get close. So anyway, please follow me on Twitter. So that's really all I have, though. Uh, I think that's enough cringeworthy moments for the evening. Uh, I really want to thank everyone for coming here. Nathaniel's Destiny, Zombie Grub, Neurojack, Attack, Gemini, and Nice Username. You guys were all awesome. Uh, hope to see you guys again. Please check these people out. Check out their content. It's good shit. And uh, we'll see you at the Lycan League next week in the late game on Wednesday. Have a good one.